Live, ready to roll here on this Thursday rainy morning here in the capital city in South Louisiana. The Jordy Collada Show off and moving, powered by Go Chevrolet. Matsuk is here. Lloyd is here on this Thursday. We're going to talk to Josh Pate coming up here in a couple of minutes. Pate will be here at 7.30 this morning. We'll talk to him about what could be next at LSU. If you've seen Josh Pate, been following him. He is on the Dave Aranda wagon. We'll ask him where he stands on this LSU opening on the Florida job at this point as other jobs around the country continue to open up. Who could be next at Virginia Tech? We'll ask that all to Josh Pate coming up here at 7.30 this morning. We will also talk to Nick Underhill at 8.15 coming up here on this Thursday edition of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet. Underhill will be here talking about the New Orleans Saints as the Saints are taking on Philadelphia this weekend. We'll ask him about some of the uh, the injured players for New Orleans. What's the status of Alvin Kamara? Lots to get to. We appreciate you starting your day here with us on the Jordy Collada Show. If you could, hit that like, share, comment button. That helps us out very much. You could do that. We appreciate that very uh, very much here on the Jordy Collada Show. We'll talk about what Ogeron said last night. Looks like Nuss Meyer's going to redshirt. <laughs> As uh, O told you earlier this week, that's my call. Uh, looks like Dad called. And said, you know what? Oh, shut it down, buddy. No more of Garrett. We've seen enough. Uh, as Garrett Nussmeyer will wear the red shirt. And uh, as Ogeron said last night, LSU getting ready for Monroe this weekend. They'll close out the season versus Texas A&M. A&M already upgrading their facilities. Yeah, oh, yeah. Doesn't it feel like they're brand new? I, I guess heard, it, But I heard this came out a couple years ago, though. What? Like, I heard, like, they announced that they were going to upgrade the facilities a couple years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Probably yeah, in place. They just gotcha, announced gotcha. it yesterday. They got gotcha. COVIDed, and yeah, so, gotcha. they, so they didn't do it. But yeah. then, very convenient time. Yeah, to right. Of course, back obviously, it's strategic to, to, to announce yeah, it. It seems like everybody's getting paid around there. Uh, Cody Boudreaux in the chat here this morning with his first donation to the show <laughs> <laughs> says uh, first bo- uh, first before Dune promotion. I love some Josh Pate. Pate will be here at seven thirty. Always appreciate bringing Pate into the conversation as he can speak on just about anything in college football. I mean, there's not too much out there that he doesn't know or have a connection to, a program out there. He's usually around the big games every weekend. Um, has our sage gone out on the set here? I think it has. Okay. Sage, looks, it's sage looks out, but sage it still, still smells nice It does in here. smell. It still smells, smells good. good. <laughs> smells like the ducks are finding their wings again. <laughs> Got the um, owls out the house. That's right. I need the owls. I, thought, I yes. need them out there. Bro, who knew about owls? I, I never knew. Did anybody? If, I never I had knew. no idea that there was bad omens. And I didn't even know the omen meant death. Like, it was Oof. like, there's a, I don't know. I don't <laughs> like it. There's an owl hooing in my backyard, and I don't like it. Um, what people don't know is that owls are actually dumb birds because they've been. What's your research on that? Ron McGill. Okay. So that's an incredible <laughs> okay. source. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take, take it. We're in. He said that. they We're did in. a great PR job because of the, how many center, how many licks does it, get, does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? It seems like a very wise bird, but it turns out it's just a dumb bird. He doesn't know anything. Oh, well, okay. So take that to the bank. Except wow. there's a bad omen for death. Um, yeah. We appreciate you starting the day. Remember, daily, we're brought to you by Papa Earl's 30% less spice or less sodium uh, than the other spices out there. Pick them up locally wherever you shop. High neighbor, Calandros, Rouse's. Also, we're brought to you by True Blue Water online at True Blue, T R U, bluewater.com. Uh, our coffee daily is Majestic Coffee, brewed down here in South Louisiana. Deliciousips.com is where you can find them online. Deliciousips.com. What you laughing about over there? Uh, meeting Boudreaux. I mean, Cody's back in the chain. He's microdosing on, on, <laughs> on the show. He's another $2 because he says your eyes look like you did the spice and dune. Oh, they do wow. turn you blue. Okay. So there you go. Okay. Compliment. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. We'll take it. Um, Josh Pate will be here in a little bit. Ogeron speaking last night. Um, Mel Tucker extended in East Lansing. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. Uh, Scott Woodward needs to be on Mel Tucker's Christmas yeah. list yeah. as Tucker just took the LSU rumors that were out there and floating about him and turned that into a 10-year, $95 million extension. Good for you, Mel Tucker, as Mississippi, or excuse me, Michigan State is uh, preparing uh, a historic offer uh, to the 49-year-old as uh, Tucker will be the highest-paid coach in the Big Ten and uh, it will also be a major commitment to Mel Tucker, and it looks like he is off the board here at LSU, the latest to go off the board. Jimbo Fisher, we said earlier this week, in our perception, again, this is just kind of how we're perceiving it, how we're seeing it. We're not talking to anybody officially, and nobody's giving us any news 
to say, hey, go report this. But if I'm just reading between the lines, it looks like Mel Tucker and Michigan State, that agreement is kind of the commitment of saying, hey, I'm here. We're here for you. Right? You're not going to LSU. You're not going to LSU. You're not going anywhere else. We're going to make you the highest paid coach in the Big Ten. Here's a 10-year commitment from the school of close to $100 million. A lot of that guaranteed, um, you know, just it, it seems like Tucker is off the board for LSU and that he should send a great big Christmas gift down to Scott Woodward, which leaves, in my opinion, in our opinion, the show's opinion, what we've talked about a ton here, of, of A-tier list coaches for the LSU job, which I thought it was a, a selection of three when it really became serious, Jimbo Fisher, Mel Tucker, and Lincoln Riley, that it looks like two of the three are now out of play with Jimbo Fisher and Mel Tucker, just from the perception of what's going on out there. Would you say that these are swings and misses by LSU or no. that they just used LSU for leverage? I think they used LSU for leverage. Um, because obviously, if, if because you see the way the contracts are rolling out, you see that Mel Tucker, this was spurned on by something, right? If you're looking at it just from the 3,000-foot view, you would imagine that LSU has been in contact with Mel Tucker. There's been smoke around his name. If LSU reaches out, then Michigan State then has right. to make the option to, okay, if LSU is interested, we have him already locked up at Michigan State. This is time to give him. If we don't pay him, somebody might. So it could. that's what I'm wondering. If LSU kind of forced the hand of Michigan State, and same thing with Jimbo when you see about all of the – facility upgrades that seem to be coming. It seems like LSU is, like you said, making a lot of people a lot of money. I think, I think, the reason why I think, I don't think it's a swing and a miss by LSU because they didn't choose, they chose to stay where they were, which is, it's it's an easier thing. Like, he's going to win at Michigan State. Jimbo Fisher's going to have less pressure at A&M. He already has $100 million from them. Now, if, if you'd have gone to Mel Tucker and said, hey, do you want the LSU job? And he says no and goes to USC, I feel like that's a swing and a miss. That's when you get chosen and picked over, for me, in my opinion. If you stay where you're at, where you've only been there for a year or two, like, I think that's, that's a little bit different of a situation. Um, I, I don't think that it's a swing and a miss on LSU's part. I, I do believe that, um, that there was conversation I do believe that they were gauging interest, and I think even those flirtations alone by LSU can spur on, you know, big money. It can bring in contracts and a commitment level from a school to a coach just to show how committed one side is. I think that this Jimbo thing with LSU all along has been a smokescreen. I really do. At times it's gotten serious when Rohan sat there and said that, you know, I mean, he had had some real conversations and it looked like it was – kind of real, you know, I mean, I began to buy in, but I think the whole time it never made any sense for Jimbo to leave College Station and come to Baton Rouge. I mean, just for him personally, if Jimbo was named the head coach, I, look, I, I would grade it an, an, a, an A higher, you know, but I don't think that ever in this process that it was ever really real for him to come to Baton Rouge just because, I mean, look at what he's leaving, right. you know, and – the expectation level there is not even close to what it would be here. Um, he knows that. He understands that. The, 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 the recruiting classes he has put together, the, the ability to upgrade his facilities in just a short amount of time to make sure that you're staying ahead of the arms race within college football. I mean, you can get all that done in Baton Rouge and at LSU, but you can do that in, to- in College Station and Texas A&M if you're Jimbo Fisher a lot easier. And is this where we get into the conversation of how good is the LSU job better than we – or not as good as we think it is? Because if you have reached out to Mel Tucker, somebody at Michigan State, and he's not, like you would say, crawling over glass to get to LSU. Like he shouldn't he shouldn't even feign interest in a Michigan State offer. If there's an LSU, even I would say meeting on the table, you would take that meeting before you took an extension. I would say the same thing for Jimbo to a lesser degree, but I would also put sandwich Lincoln Riley – in that conversation because, like we said, we don't know anything necessarily, but there's reports. You saw the J-Boy show, friend of our show, report eight years, $96 million, and it doesn't seem like the, the tires are absolutely moving in the right direction. So it makes me wonder, what is the public perception of LSU outside of Baton Rouge? Well, can I just say this? Once I saw the numbers yep. being published out there yesterday, that's when I thought this is fake. Smoke screen. This 100%. is fake news because – you think that all along during this process that we're just kind of swinging at names 
Like Randy Lanois says inside of the chat, do we even know that LSU talked to Mel Tucker? No, we don't. don't. Right. We really don't. Exactly. I but mean, there, there's only, there's only, the there's contract. only, but there could only be the perception of that oh, the job is open yeah. and that Mel Tucker's name just keeps coming up. You know, that like names like Feldman and Tom Luganbill and, you know, national names are talking about Mel Tucker as a possibility for the job. So does it make Michigan State just react on that alone? How do we know that they had official discussions? We don't. Or that they were we really extend don't. him before even any of this happened. Like it right. could have already been right. planned. It feels like some official discussions have happened between LSU and Lincoln Riley. It feels like that just because of all the kind of, you know, uh, reporting that's going on from, from, from all around. But, you know, Bruce Feldman, who's a very well-respected journalist within college football and has tremendous relationships within a ton of programs – in, in in the sport, reported yesterday, and this was something that he tweeted out. At uh, he tweeted this out yesterday at around four o'clock. He said, "Lots of chatter about Lincoln Riley leaving Oklahoma for LSU, but I am hearing that this is not going to happen." That was yesterday at four o'clock. And as uh, Lloyd talked about, J Boy, uh, our friend Jake Crane, uh, who was going to come on here on Monday morning, we'll talk to him uh, on Monday morning, was reporting yesterday. Um, that Lincoln Riley could be leaving LSU, as he says sources tell him, and this is uh, coming down yesterday afternoon, that LSU has offered Oklahoma head coach Lincoln Riley an eight-year contract for upwards of $96 million. And also, does that? and he asked the question, does that mean Caleb Williams could be heading to Baton Rouge as well? Um, there's just too much information in yeah. there. Yeah. There, there, there's too much information in there for a Scott Woodward negotiated deal to really believe that that has been offered. If that's the offer when it comes out and if Lincoln Riley accepts the job and he signs an eight-year, $96 million deal, well, all that does is just really kind of legitimize J-Boy and he's got really yeah. cr- you know great relationships because people have been swimming around this story locally for, for, for a month and you know continue to just kind of throw things to the wall and see what sticks. Now, I mean, you're kind of following the tea leaves and you, you know, kind of read between the lines. But, I mean, for somebody to come out and say that they've offered an eight-year, $96 million deal means that you've got a resource and you've got a relationship at the tip top of the mountain on LSU's athletic facility. And that's tough to do right now. I mean, it's tough th- to get that news. Do you think this entire – I mean, he's, this, has been, this is going on a month and a half, almost two months. And you haven't heard a peep about any type of detail, anybody who's inter- interviewed anything. And you think now, like, I'm not saying you, but just in general. I'm just, I'm just putting what the right, people are right, saying. Right, right. In there, general, yes. like, do we think that now, after all of this time and all of this secrecy and all of this, like, hey, you know what, we're going to keep this close to the tight and keep this tight in inner circles, that now we're going to get sloppy and we're going to let it out and we're going to leak out? I just don't believe. I just don't – I think there's too many details to, for it to be true. The only thing I would say to that is – And if it is, great. Whatever. Yeah, no, the, the way I would see that it would be leaked is this not – this wouldn't be on an LSU front because you've seen the way Scott Woodward has handled this up to this point. Now when contracts start leaving that, hands okay, that, and that getting into sense. other people, like you start going on to other schools who don't want to lose a Lincoln Riley, who don't want to lose a Jimbo or don't want to lose a Mel Tucker, and Lincoln Riley specifically in this case – would you not be the ones to float out the contract details and float out just anything that you can put any news on that kind of dampers your expectations for LSU to get Lincoln Riley? Because yeah. that's how the game is played, right? You have to rebuff on what you think is actually going to happen. You have to start saying, oh, he doesn't want to live in Baton Rouge. He doesn't let you know. That's what Oklahoma has to do if they want to keep their guy. And the question for you, Jordy, would be if you're J-Boy, how solid would your information have to be for you to run with this and go live with it? Um... Like, because people take shots in the dark, and I'm not saying he did, but I'm just for him because he's established in the platform that he has. And he's taking a massive leap of, I would say, faith. It's not going to burn him in the end. It's not going to really matter. But for him to go public like this generates a lot. He's got to trust who he's talking to for sure. Absolutely, He's got to trust who he's talking to for sure. To be that definitive with the numbers and the contract, you know, that could be either way. I mean, that could be somebody that smokes screen you, or that could be somebody that really, really knows and says, hey, man, here's the deal. You know, go with it. Um, Because that's a reputation kind of line center right there. If you're right, then people think that J-Boy is plugged in. If he's wrong, it's another talking head going to to a microphone. And to your point, if it is true, and we have offered him 8 for 96, and he turns it down, then you can revisit, okay, did we overestimate the LSU job? Because that would be – because we don't know if any of the other people got offered or anything. But if this offer is an actual legitimate offer, 
then it's like, okay, why didn't he want to come to LSU? Like, why? Like, is it not what we thought it was? Which I don't think that. I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm a, I'm a little bit biased, but I mean, I think the LSU job is a better job than the Oklahoma job. Um, yes, I think so too. I mean, I think that it's it's evident that it is. I mean, look at the last 20 years and and what has been LSU's played in three national championship games, four, um, four one national three, championships yeah. games, and and won three. And Oklahoma's played in one, you know. I mean, um, you know, yeah. Uh-huh. I don't, but that's what makes that's what makes me wonder why why is it why do people stall like this? Is it then does it turn into Lincoln it's, Riley look, doesn't it's, it's want hard... to be at LSU because there is no I all mean, the while this. Lincoln Riley could have been playing this to his benefit the same way that Mel Tucker has, right? right? I mean, he could be squeezing more years and more money out of Oklahoma, and I think that's why that's where that leak, if it came from anywhere, it came from Riley's side. Yeah. Right, like it came from Riley's side to put pressure on Oklahoma, and is was that Joe Castiglione? Who's you? A, I mean, you should know. Yeah, my, absolutely, my friend. It, it, it's a very <laughs> it, it, outside of Woodward. It's probably one of the most powerful athletic directors in college football. Really, absolutely, and has the reputation of being one of the best athletic directors going. I mean, look at Oklahoma's. Athletic program. I mean, they're relevant in just about everything. Yeah, they, I mean, they're they're following the LSU model. You, you're good at, you know, you're good at volleyball. You're good at softball. You're good at. I mean, they got some baseball things running. Basketball, how to run there, and they're good at. You know, that I understand yeah. what you're saying, but my bigger point would be, then if you're Lincoln Riley, why would you not want to pivot to a better job? Well, here's my thing: is it's hard. Like it's a so Lincoln Riley's been at Oklahoma for a long time. And he's built six years, six, six or seven. Six, I don't know how, but he's six, built five. five? Mm-hmm. I think so. Whatever. But he's built like five years is a time like like when when coaches go somewhere and they do their own thing like they say okay you need about four or five years to actually make it you and make it your deal and make it your situation and he's built that culture there that's it's a hard thing to leave somewhere and go somewhere else and do that all over again and, and restart and re, re restart like from the bottom you know and I just, I just, I think that could be part of it. It's not like he's leaving for a job. It's not like he's at a mid major and going to a big school. He's already at a top tier school, and he's going to go up just a little bit more. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's a hard thing to do. I would just, I would just think that it's when you look at LSU and what it is and what it could be. I wouldn't say that that's like starting over. You're starting fresh for sure. But look at the like, if you're a, a farmer or anything, look at the land you've been given to. To like, oh, this is it. a very fruitful endeavor if you come here and know how to farm. And it seems like Lincoln Riley is the top farmer on the board. So why would you not go to the, the place where the land is most plentiful? And we don't know. Like, there's some other personal stuff that could be, like, maybe he likes his family or whoever. Like, maybe they all like it there and he's just comfortable there. It's and, Norman, Oklahoma. I, mean, I don't they know. Can't you don't know. Much, I don't know. I don't, know. I don't know anything about it. I don't I've never been, but it doesn't seem like a, you know, a place for the stars. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I can't no. comment on it just because I've never been there, but I can't right. imagine. If we've never heard of it. I'm, I'm that, with you. <laughs> I mean, but maybe he likes that. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just giving you, like, it's, it could be, there could be other factors other than just money and school and look and all of that stuff. Uh, Daily, we were brought to you by Johnson and Spillers. They are our official dentist here on the Jordy Collada Show. Go see Dr. Johnson and Dr. Spillers here. Tell them you heard it right here on the Jordy Collada Show. You can see them in two locations. There is a spot out in Gonzales on Prepara Avenue. There's also a spot here in Baton Rouge in between Segan Lane and Blue Bonnet that you can stop in and check out. Johnson and Spillers is online at johnsonspillers.com. They're also on Facebook where you can stop in and check out all of their services that include pediatric dentistry. They include uh, emerg- uh, emergency dentistry if you need any type of emergency treatment, general dentistry, and they can also help you out with some Botox if you're looking for that, cosmetic dentistry as well. Uh, their website is fantastic. You can check that out online at johnsonspillers.com. Prepara Avenue out in Gonzales and on Perkins Road here in Baton Rouge. Uh, as uh, you can request an appointment online. You can book that appointment online. You can check out all of the services and meet the team there. Dr. Spillers, uh, who has uh, been practicing now for 15 years, uh, and, uh, and his partner, uh, Dr. Johnson, who's got great experience as well. Check him out online. JohnsonSpillers.com is where you can find him, and, of course, Gonzalez and here in Baton Rouge. Uh, so lots to talk about here in this coaching search. We'll talk to Josh Pate and bring him into the conversation here in a couple of minutes as he has um, – and, and, and Brian and Annie Penton, who give a, a donation to the show, which we appreciate uh, very much, a $5 uh, donation saying it's uh, – I'm telling you all it's Aranda. And Josh Pate's guy – 
is Dave Aranda. He has been beating the Dave Aranda drum uh, pretty loud since he left Waco uh, a couple of weeks back, or last week, actually, with the win over Oklahoma. Uh, so Pate will be coming into the conversation here in a couple of minutes, and we'll ask him directly about Dave Aranda's chances and what he thinks about Billy Napier. And Because, you know, look, as we said yesterday, if, if it's true on, on, on Riley where he's either using this for uh, some leverage or, um, you know, he's, he's, he's not coming, as Bruce Feldman uh, tweeted out yesterday. I think it does get to a list that consists of Billy Napier and Dave Aranda. And like we said, you know, kind of what's, um, you know, what, what, what's your choice? You like offense, you like defense. And Dave Aranda, if you're a defensive person, that is, you know, that's the spot. That's the choice. Uh, so we'll ask Pate what he thinks. Why are you, uh, why are you grinning about over Aranda there? there? I, I mean, I wouldn't be mad with either, but it's just, it's just a, it's an interesting proposition. All of these, all of this time is so funny. Where you go from Leak and Riley, it's an absolute, it's done. You know, it feels like a done deal, and then it goes to, well, might be Dave Aranda. Dave Aranda might be going to USC, and it's like, oh, it might just be the only option on the board is Billy Napier, and I wouldn't be mad about that at oh. all. But it's just funny that you have to go down the list and be like, well, that would be. Probably, if you want to look at it from Scott Wilburn's number, three swings and misses. Yeah, like Napier's yeah. not the first name on the board, and I think he would be the first one to tell you that. Um, um, watch out for Matt now, Matt Campbell. Too. Yeah, I mean, it up coming down the down the stretch. Oh, Brody, Brody Miller brought it up yesterday, <laughs> but I mean, there are people around there that says you know it, Campbell's name has come up. So, um, do you see also, his? did you see Napier's defensive coordinator is up for the uh, Royals? Yep. Yeah, he had the best offensive line in college football. I yep. mean, would you just take that program and move it? I mean, I, I mean, you take his, not his necessary his, but you would take his yeah his the way he I'm built saying, yeah the way he built it. Offensive line coach, I would imagine you would take sure. his defensive coordinator. I think he'd probably go back up to the New York Giants and get Rob Sale, who yeah. is the kind of assistant offensive line coach with the Giants, and bring him back down. He played at LSU, played for Saban, coached for Saban. That's where they met in Alabama's program. Uh, he brought him over with him to Lafayette and made him the offensive line coach, and then turned him into an offensive coordinator. But Napier is going to call you know, the bulk of the offense. He's the guy that's going to do the installation and the play calling. Um, <laughs> Just, we'll uh, see, man. We'll see. Josh Pate coming up next. We'll also talk New Orleans Saints here in about 45 minutes is uh, Nick Underhill will be here from NewOrleans.Football. Remember, go Chevrolet, G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com, every single day driving us right here on the Jordy Collada Show, brought to you by Go Chevrolet. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. True Blue Water, true hydration at its finest. Right now, you're only a few minutes away from getting your five-gallon water delivered to you, just like we are over here at the UDL. All you got to do is log on to truebluewater.com. That's T R U. BlueWater.com. The website's fantastic over at TrueBlueWater.com. You can get your service and find out how quick it is. You can schedule a delivery, even hop on the billing system right there at TrueBlueWater.com. T-R-U, BlueWater.com.
Welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet on this Tuesday morning raining down here in South Louisiana. Stay safe if you're out on the roads. If you're catching us later in the day, make sure and hit that like, share button. We appreciate you being there. All of our sound brought back to you by RMB Builders, rmb-builders.com. Rhett Bourgeois and his crew online. They can help you out with just about anything. A project around the house, a total reconstruction, a custom-made home. Get in touch with them at rmb-builders.com. Uh, one of the best is Josh Payton, college football. If you're not following him, you need to. Uh, as he is on Twitter, he's on uh, YouTube, he is all over the place. As uh, You can find him at uh, Late Kick Josh. Uh, as uh, he is on uh, YouTube giving you updates every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central Time. Uh, where he's got the latest on just about every program. And LSU's been a hot topic. He has showed his love for Tiger Droppings. We've got the site <laughs> roaring for Josh Pate. My man oh, is... Oh, Tiger Droppings. If, 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 if he was a candidate right now, he would be one of the hottest candidates out there because everybody would be lining up to pay uh, for his service. LSU making a lot of people rich. Josh, good morning. How are you? Yeah, will we be one of them? Will we be two of them? That's what I want to know. I just want to be the guy one day that gets a rumor floated out about him at the same time as the basketball team has to take a bus to a game because they have budget cuts. Because that's what happened to Michigan State yesterday. Wow. So that's all I've ever wanted in life. Apparently, if you get mentioned with LSU, you get 100 mil. So that's a, uh, that's a good deal. What did you make that of Mel good. Tucker? What did you make of that, 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 that news? I... I remember the first thing that came to my mind was when he was being hired and he was at Colorado and then Michigan state comes and gets him. And I don't know how well people's memories are of that period, but the biggest single talking point nationally was, wow, Michigan state vastly overpaid for Mel Tucker. And that was then that was, it feels like a long time ago. It's only two years ago, but people felt like they outpaid for him then. And it was really just them showing that they could do it because they were in the Big Ten. Well, now, I mean, I don't know what you would have said, but if you would have told me 24 months later he's going to be neck and neck with Nick Saban as the highest paid coach in college football, what would you think? Well, I would think I would think he's gone to coach the Detroit Lions. I don't know what I would have thought. I, have, I would not have seen a pass short of Michigan State miraculously winning a national title where that was going to happen. But we also know that once COVID entered the equation, it sort of backlogged the entire coaching change process in a lot of ways. And all I think it did was dam it up a little bit. And now we've released that dam everywhere from uh, LSU to especially Virginia Tech, USC. Yeah. And it's had a ripple effect or a tsunami effect in the industry to where you are going to see numbers that maybe you never see again. I think that the misconception is the numbers keep rising in this world. And they may not. This may be the absolute crest, the absolute peak uh, that we ever see some of these numbers floated out there. So it's a very good time to be a very good coach. Uh, I am looking forward to tonight's broadcast on YouTube. You can catch that at 7 o'clock. If you are not subscribed to Josh's uh, YouTube uh, page, get over there and hit that alert button so you're notified when he goes live tonight for Late Kick with Josh Pate. Uh, if you're following and need it on Twitter, it's at Late Kick Josh. 23 hours ago, you tweeted out, Hire Dave Aranda and thank me later. The former LSU defensive coordinator and current Baylor head coach. Um, why, why so high on his stock right now? So this past weekend I was out there, and I had always observed Dave. I've never really been around him for an extended period of time. So when we were at the OU Baylor game, we got some time with him. Uh, both before and after the game. Um, and I'm telling you what I observe is obviously them winning over Oklahoma. It's not so much the win, although that was a very, very good thing, a very good feather in his cap. I, I listen to the way a lot of folks talk about the, their process, about the way they go about things. And most of them honestly sound the same to me. There are a few who stand out. Uh, Nick Saban's always stood out. Kirby Smart gets it. He's always stood out. Ryan Day, and if you've noticed the trend, these are very successful programs. They stand out. The way that Dave Aranda talks about the process they go about doing things there, it stands out to me. It sounds very cerebral. It sounds exactly the way that those other guys sound. Here's what I love. What I love is after the game, you guys know him because he's at LSU, hardly ever smiles. 
And so after the game, he walks in. Everyone's so exuberant. They want to celebrate. They want to get their quotes in the post-game press conference. And Dave Aranda walks in, and the biggest takeaway he had was, well, I'm kind of aggravated that it mattered. And people are looking around saying, what? What, what do you mean, what mattered? He said, well, the TCU loss obviously mattered because we got a higher level of play today coming off a loss than we did last week. And I've got to believe that it's because our guys were fired up because they had a negative result last week. We are not where we ever need to be until that doesn't matter anymore, until we play to a set standard every week, regardless of external factors. Now, that stuff bores a lot of people. Yeah. And a lot of people think that's coach speak. That's not coach speak. That's a life philosophy. And it's the kind of thing that if you can instill into an organization instead of just yourself, it's the way to sustain success. That's the difference in some of these programs that win and then fade really quick and they can't ever get back to that level and doing something like Alabama's done. That's all they ever talk about at Alabama. They don't ever talk about result-oriented goals. They don't ever talk about their destination being winning a championship. And I circle back to what I just said again. Everyone thinks that that's boring. No one wants to talk about that. Everyone wants to talk about disrespect. Everyone wants to talk about motivation. Everyone wants to talk about what's going to get you hyped up. The standard. That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So I think, and I, I really, really believe, Dave Aranda is a guy that not only gets that, I think he can inject it into an organization. And I also think he himself has adapted and is still learning and adjusting just this last year. I think he's come a long way in his sort of in-game strategy offensively. Yeah. I think he's flipped some switches. I don't think he's done doing that. And so he has all the qualities. He checks every box I would ever want for my head coach. He has showed some emotion over the last couple of weeks, too, that I think has kind of jumped out to some people, especially here in Baton Rouge, who watched him for so long on the sidelines. I mean, he's very calculated. He's very calm. He's very patient. Um, but one of the most interesting things that I heard from a former player of his, Josh, after he left was, and, and I'll say it was Jacoby Stevens who, who told me, he said, the thing that they missed the most about about Aranda was his communication style, the way that he would talk to the players and the way that he was able to get the best out of the crew without yelling, jumping, screaming, and just talking to them almost like men, treating them with respect, I think was kind of what it came down to. And that was very eye-opening for me in the moment. I remember thinking to myself, he's going to make a tremendous head coach because people are going to respect him. I completely agree. And I also, I remember back in, back when I played, I remember, you know, we had a great big hill behind our football field. And obviously that's where you go when things have gone bad. And I remember, you know, we would, we would, obviously you got to get your conditioning in. I'm not talking about conditioning, but, oh. and it almost seemed like back in the day, you had coaches that were yellers and you had coaches that were sending you over to the hillers to run up and down. And then there were coaches that actually knew how to tell you how to fix what you had done wrong. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other ones, they just yelled and they sent you to run hills because they didn't know anything better to do. And Dave Aranda is, is not the send you to the hill guy. I mean, he'll get on you yeah. and you're going to be conditioned. But what he knows is the game. And also what he knows is how to put what he has in his mind in your mind. And that's exactly what I've noticed about him, too, is what you said. Those folks who have that approach – they almost draw you in a little bit more because yeah. they're not constantly, constantly on, on 11, on the microphone. Uh, but it's not just, you know, is he relatable? It's not just, or is he a screamer? It's what's coming out of his mouth is going to change your career for the better. That's what matters. Uh, Josh Page joining us here. He's fantastic. 247 Sports. Make sure you're following him and subscribe to his YouTube page at The Late Kick tonight. A, uh, a newest episode will be out at 7 o'clock Central Live. Um, and I'd imagine you'll be talking a lot about this LSU job. What do you make of this Lincoln-Riley story and the, the smoke that is hovering over LSU's program with, with Riley in Oklahoma? It's going to be it's going to be very juicy. Let me make one correction. Oh, this will be, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's funny. This will probably get me in a little trouble. So um, the actual channel that we do the show on right now is the 24-7 uh, Sports right. Channel. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. The We're, other scared the, uh, We're scared of suits here. We're scared of suits here. That's my fault. That's my fault. Right. Correct. Okay. So, um, so who knows what's going to happen between now and tonight? I think it's kind of, it's kind of humorous to me that everyone seems to be waiting on pins and needles for an announcement. Like one's going to come in the middle of Oklahoma season one way or the other. I don't think that's the way that's going to go down. 
but I do, I, I do buy into the idea, buy into the notion, let's say, or the theory that uh, smoke screens are real. And I'm not necessarily uh, confident in telling you this is one. I am confident in saying, oh, it could be one. And what I would really love is for us to get on the back end of all this mm-hmm. and to look back and, and something has been a smoke screen to mm-hmm. where when you tell this story down the road and then you've got the LSU coach, so you know the, the ends are all tied. When you tell the story, I want there to have been a legendary smoke screen. Yeah. And if that's what Lincoln Riley is, it would be legendary, Jordy. What I've always been curious about, and sometimes it happens this way, sometimes it doesn't, is how deep do we get into this thing before a mystery name that no one has thought of previously comes to the forefront? And that really, to my knowledge, hasn't happened in this search. And again, maybe it won't happen, but I think you learn a lot about Scott Woodward every day by the way that the search goes. And you can't judge it until you get to the end, obviously. But um, I think they're having... I don't know if they're having fun down there, but if I were Scott Woodward, I'd have to take it last, at least five minutes and have a little fun and do a little cursory scan of internet, Twitter, message boards, et cetera, every day. <laughs> um, Shout out Tiger Bait Lawyer. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, do you exactly. know do you know what you did for, for, for Tiger Droppings when you gave him the shout out on your platform and, and, and it was mean of you. Individually named Tiger Bait Lawyer. I mean, you have got them wanting to enter a a float into Endymion, <laughs> sponsored by Tiger Droppings. They're looking for a Pulitzer. With a lawyer, oh, with Tiger Bait lawyer riding on the front as the <laughs> ornament. I mean, just, that was amazing. Look, I've heard, I've heard stories about if Kim Kardashian or Paris Hilton or anyone like that, if they mention you on Instagram, how much it's worth. But that's yesterday. I think the modern day value is how much juice can we get your message board handle if we name you on the late kick. That's I'm what I you. want to be talking about. You're a menace. You are, bro. I mean, the way that you have infiltrated college campuses with game day signs now into into, into Tiger Droppings with Tiger The Paint most Lawyer. volatile great. place on the planet. Do you expect Florida to open up the job at uh, yeah. in Gainesville? Yeah. What, 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 what yeah. will that yeah, do? do? What will that do to this, this, this coaching search? I... Well, it'll add, it'll add to it. It'll just turn the faucet open a little bit more. Um... Here's what I here's my entire perception on that. I get the feeling that there will be some hesitancy there. Ultimately, I don't think it'll stop them, but I think there'll be some hesitancy because they're scared to get into the open market with the market being as crowded as it is right now. Now, 10 years ago, no one at Florida was really thinking like that. 10 years ago, Florida thought, "We're Florida, we'll go get whoever we want." I get the sense that they don't feel that way about themselves necessarily, even though they should, in my opinion. Um, Having said that, I still think that they're going to have to make a move. If they don't, then I don't care what they say. If Florida does not make a move and get themselves a new head coach in there, it will only be them prolonging this period because they don't want to get into this market, in a market this volatile, and in a market where they don't perceive their to be enough A-list candidates out there. But see, here's the thing about it. You don't need an A-list candidate as defined by media or even your fan base, to be frank. You need the right head coach. And sometimes the biggest splash is a dud, and sometimes you hire a coach and it's nothing more than a whimper on the national scene, and then they end up winning for you. I don't know if Florida's ready to do it because I don't really know if they're ready to fully commit to it. Everyone wants to claim they're fully committed to football around here. LSU's yeah. fully committed to football. Yeah. A&M's fully committed to football. Bama is. Georgia is. I don't have doubts about that. I do have a little bit of doubt about Florida. And I'm also interested in watching Miami down the road because they're saying the same thing. You've got those phrases like money won't be an issue. We're ready to spend. Well, we're going to find out. Yeah. We're going to find out about that in due time because I think while we're at it, that job will probably come open too. Yeah, so the athletics director for Miami was – uh, terminated earlier this week. Uh, is Billy Napier the safest play on the board for any job, in your opinion? Well, so so do me a favor. When you say safest, because we may have different definitions, uh-huh. define safest for me. Uh, in Baton Rouge, consistently winning 10 games a year with top 10 recruiting classes? Or Florida? I, I think that, yes, I think that's a guy who in time could accomplish that. Who knows, maybe he would off the bat. Mm-hmm. I here, here's where I am though. I view Dave Aranda that way too. Yeah, 
and I'm not comparing one versus the other, uh, but I also, I, I don't know. I think that there is a ceiling on, on the long-term perspective, let's say, for a Dave Aranda program that I trust to be a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. uh, Napier could very well be that way too. Now, uh, we have spoken about Billy Napier before. Yeah. Billy Napier, as a matter of fact, has some of the same characteristics that we've been talking about with Dave Aranda. If you value a more, uh, a more tenured track record as a head coach, obviously by a few years he has that too. Uh, so I, I look. I've heard this. Here's what people say up here in Nashville. You tell me if it's accurate down there. Are there people rubbed the wrong way at the prospect of going to Lafayette to get the head coach for LSU? Is that accurate? I think that there are some. That, that there are definitely there's a contingency, but I don't think that that's anybody that Scott Woodward's paying any attention to. Right. You know, I don't think okay. that there's any big money that has any say so that would say. We're not taking Lafayette's coach, and Woodward would only reply if he's the best candidate for the job. We're getting him. Um, I, I, I would imagine is where where that would sit. I don't think that that would have any influence on whether or not he would get, he would get it. Yeah, I would hope not. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. So you ease my concern there. Um, I think that the way you describe that, yes, Billy Napier fits that. I also think Dave Aranda fits that. Yeah. I don't want to make this an Aranda Napier debate, but it almost does on this sense. If you were in charge of making this higher, would you go offense or defense? Would you put a more emphasis on one side? I would, I guess because Aranda's kind of the guy I like, uh -huh. I guess I'm saying I would go defense. Right. But really, the entire reason why I like Dave Aranda is predicated on how I think he manages a program overall. You know, I'm almost, I'm almost resigned in this particular process from thinking about the side of the ball that those coaches specialize on. Hmm. To be honest with you, you asking me right now is the first time I've thought about that critically. Uh, I know, obviously, which side of the ball each guy specializes on. Like, I know what side of the ball Lincoln Riley specializes yeah. on. I really think with the resource you, you will have at your disposal at LSU – and the recruiting resource you will have. If you are a, an elite organizational guy, an elite structure guy, you'll have all the talent in the world to where if you assign the right people to the other side of that ball, there's no reason for me to ever watch an LSU football game and even be able to tell which side of the ball the head coach specializes on. Um, you, you like Aranda. We like Aranda, too, a lot. I mean, I, I loved him when he was here. Do you think... Do you know if there's been contact? Do you know if he's even a, like a legitimate candidate for the job? You know, because we've there's been mixed mixed rumors here about he hasn't been contacted. He has been contacted. Um, do you have any insight on that? Uh, he was, as you would expect, a steel trap about that last <laughs> week. I um, I feel fairly confident that the tires have at least been kicked on that. Yeah. I do feel confident about that. I don't know about formality. I don't know about one person directly talking to another. I know nothing about that. I do feel like tires have at least been kicked, overtures, you know, back channels, however you want to term that. I do think that's in play. Um, I also think it's realistic to expect that at this late stage in the game, Scott Woodward obviously has his hot board, you know, the only one that really counts. I don't know where Dave Aranda's name is on that. I know where he is on mine. Uh, but I also think that he's an adult and understands the process. Now, the other thing that you don't know is what are what are these guys' personal preferences? Because everybody we're talking about right now is in a consequential season. Baylor's in this thing. Oklahoma's in this thing. Louisiana's in this thing. So you don't ever know. You know, if some guy out there is totally willing to talk once he goes home every Thursday night, and one guy says, nope, I'm not listening to it at all until I get done with this season. I don't know what kind of guy Dave Aranda is on that front. Um, who makes sense at Virginia Tech to you, just kind of off the top of your head? I'd, I'd be interested to see if Napier gets his name involved yeah. there because mm -hmm. that's who they want up there. Like They've looked at Billy Napier. Look, here's the only thing I wonder. Knowing the job that Billy Napier has turned down already, I really wonder if Virginia Tech qualifies as the candidate – that checks enough boxes to make him leave where he is right now for. Yeah. And I, you know, he, listen, he knows his preferences better than me. He probably know the Virginia Tech job better than me. I, 
just listening to him talk, you don't have to listen to rumors, listening to him talk and knowing where his head's at. If he were to take that job, I would imagine it's come down to, hey, it's just time for me to go. It's just time for me to move on. Uh, I don't want to be at a different level. I don't want to be Jeff Brom at Purdue where I'm really hot and I choose to forego some opportunities and then my stock cools. And I'm not saying that's going to happen with him, but if he moves for Virginia Tech, I got to think that maybe that's part of the equation. Because, I mean, you guys know the job he's had a shot at and hasn't left. Does Virginia Tech seem like the job he would leave for? Yeah. No, yeah, no, and, no. I mean, no, if you could get in the right. SEC, why well, yeah. wouldn't you have taken that chance whenever you had it there? It doesn't. Um, if, if you're an OSU fan, isn't that what you're concerned about? Because it seemed like Napier is the one in the back pocket. And if you start seeing these other jobs come to fruition, when you see a Florida come open, you see a Virginia Tech come open, you see Texas Tech come open, does any of that move the radar for LSU to have to almost accelerate their process? It depends on how much leverage their job has. And I would assume the LSU job carries max leverage. Uh, in the minds of not only the decision makers there, but Billy Napier's folks, and so I don't, I don't believe if the LSU job is still open at this time, and Billy Napier has a shot at it, if that is conveyed properly to his folks and his representation, I do not believe there would be a knee jerk reaction if another job is offered. Now I know it gets in the weeds a little bit if they give you a a seventy two hour moratorium. You got seventy two hours. You let us know. Yeah, I know that can get a little hairy, uh, but I I think the LSU job and Billy Napier, I think that match will be there if LSU wants it to be there. Uh, this has been a cool 20 minutes with uh, Late Kick Josh, Josh Pate, who you can find on Twitter at Late Kick Josh. And as we said, every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night on the 247 YouTube channel, he goes live with incredible insight. Uh, last one, I'll get you out of here. When it goes back to this kind of Lincoln-Riley LSU debate, you had mentioned the Oklahoma LSU job. You did a great job of kind of comparing the two of LSU U and uh, USC when they first opened up earlier this season. When you look at these two giants in college football, is is what's the comparison on the LSU Oklahoma job? It's a cloud nine versus cloud ten thing. The whole way I looked at it with Riley the other night is I said, you know, if, if I'm in that situation. I'm not sure I'd make that jump, even though I think LSU is the better job. Uh, But the reason is because I've got such a great setup at Oklahoma. That is, to me, jumping from cloud nine, trying to jump to cloud ten. And it would be interesting now. Listen, it would be selfishly to be great for us in the South if he were to go to LSU. But at the same time, you know, I got into the bigger debate the other night about something I didn't think was going to be a debate. And there were people debating me as to whether LSU is a better job than Oklahoma. And look, that's an argument that ends pretty quick for me, but apparently it lasts a little bit longer for other folks. I look, I, I would have, I would, I would still have some surprise, even though I've seen all the stuff out there. I would be surprised if he took that job. I would not be surprised if that ends up being sort of smokescreen type material at the end of the day for elsewhere, or for them going elsewhere. Mm. Enjoy Columbus this weekend. Thank you for your time this morning. Have a great broadcast tonight. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, brother. You got it, bro. There is uh, Josh Pate checking in from uh, from Tennessee this morning. As you can find him on uh, Twitter, at Lake Kick Josh. Check out the uh, the YouTube tonight over on the 247 Sports page as uh, it is a fantastic watch. So informative. Very informative. Uh, we appreciate him for starting his day here with us on the Jordy Collada Show. Daily, we're brought to you by Cajun Ready Mix. Remember, Cajun Ready Mix Concrete is uh, making uh, concrete here in the greater Baton Rouge area. They have nine plants, certified plants, around the greater Baton Rouge area and all outlying cities, which means that your concrete will be on time and to the exact specification. They strive to be the premier provider of quality concrete, and they can do that for you no matter if it's a residential, commercial, industrial, or municipal project. Get online and check them out, CajunRMC.com. Their phone number is easy, 225-372-5060, 372-5060. And when I mean a residential project, if you just need your driveway repaired, you can get in touch with Cajun Ready Mix, and they'll have a truck over there and knock that out for you. 225-372-5060, 372-5060. We'll be back with more of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered every single day by Go Chevrolet. Bear's Specialty Meats. 
home to the finest boudin in South Louisiana. Two spots right here in Baton Rouge and out in Prairieville. Stop in and see them in the Dutchtown Shopping Center on Highway 73 or right here in Baton Rouge on Jefferson Highway. Online, abearsmarkets.com, and they're all over social media. You can find them on Facebook. You can find them on Instagram. Abears combines perfect seasoning with that authentic Cajun flavor. Find out for yourself. Baton Rouge on Jefferson Highway and in Prairieville on Highway 73. abearsmarkets.com. GoFlow IV and Spa, 7970 Jefferson Highway is where you can find them, or you can simply go online to GoFlowIV.com. GoFlow IV Spa is a medical spa that specializes in IV hydration with vitamin infusion. At GoFlow IV Spa, they can help you with a wide range of issues, from skin care to illness recovery, athletic performance, hangover cure, chronic illness, and even chronic dehydration. GoFlowIV.com or stop in and see them. 7970 Jefferson Highway. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at GoExpressAutoSales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express auto sales the newest addition to the family of go chevrolet remember go chevrolet is located down in laplace louisiana but now welcoming aboard go express the new used car lot located in baton rouge louisiana at 115 22 florida boulevard All right, welcome back in here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Mikey Matuk in studio in the UDL with us. Yesterday, a very exciting day for the Jordy Collada Show as uh, we signed a lease on a brand new studio that we will debut here in a couple of weeks. We're going to make sure and get it all wired up correctly, get the sound right, make sure that there's no AC unit hovering over the microphones as we do live podcasts every day. Enjoy this while you have it. The, little, the, the subtle hum that puts you to bed. It's like hum a up. soothing. We will, yeah. uh, fun, man. We will yeah. look back on the on, on the. Uh, I'm doing it on now. On the AC. <laughs> and how did, how did uh, and people stick laugh. around? Just like holy cow, look at it, this. It's like having a fan on in your bedroom. It kind of puts you yeah. know. It's like a, it's a comforting noise. Oh, I love noise. that. I've got to have a little noise. Absolutely. I agree. You go white noise machine or white fan? White noise machine. White noise machine? I, I gotta go. Fan. I just go fan. I go white noise machine. I go fan. Do you Natural bo- noise. Box fan? No, or box just fan. roof fan? Yeah, just ceiling fan. I got an Emerson fan, old school. My dad, he, he's into, got a lot of weird hobbies. And uh, yeah. he refurbishes fans. So we oh, got into wow. that. Wow. And it's like wow. these old wow. school, like 1950s fans that. Wow. Psh, perfect. Damn, dude, a fan's like a clock. It is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it like is. You, you, open, in there, you open that thing up and start working on it. Like, you we're, we're in the deep, yeah, bro. Too we're late deep now. in. Yeah, absolutely. Ceiling fans are risky. You had the little the clicks on the ceiling fans, though. I can't, I can't sleep with that. A uh, lot of reaction to our friend Josh Pate stopping by here, which he moves the needle down here in South Louisiana and around Baton Rouge right now in coaching search season as LSU is in the teeth of it. Uh, We appreciate him for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like button, share button, dislike button, comment button. Just interact with us. That helps us out a ton here on the Jordy Colada Show. uh, Remember, you can catch us in any form, live. You can come back and check out the YouTube as it's archived for you, and all of it goes into a podcast audio form, and uh, you can find that. Uh, We are developing shows over here on the Jordy Colada Show. Mikey Montuk will have his own show here in a couple of weeks. Mikey's Takes as uh, he will take Mikey that takes. with him. Is that right? <laughs> we we don't, don't know. We have it's a working, right, right, it's a working, it's a working, it's a working title. title. We have a few. That's an it's option. A working title. That's it's an working option. Title. Could, okay. be a, right. could be a segment. Uh, Maybe the title I saw the real-time was. reaction. Yeah. <laughs> 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 producer, <What? laughs> producer and host. Whoa. Yeah, say, whoa. Oh, hey. Oh. Yo, yo, yo. All right. The carpool crew. So if you all have, actually, people in the chat, if you have an, if you have a suggestion on a really cool name, throw it in there. Yeah. What would, your be, uh, what would you name uh, Ma Took's show? Put it on the poll. Um, okay. Just interact. Um, <laughs> Should we put our suggestions up there, the ones that we've put come up with? What? Nah, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not okay. yet. Get, okay. get some feedback first. Yeah. And then right. we'll make a, uh, then we'll make a poll. Decision. Yeah, then we'll make a poll of uh, who is, uh, which one stands out. Uh, carpool Queen. No, we were burning it here. 
we were burning. <laughs> yeah, we hey, actually, I fact, got a question for you. We need to get back you. into that. I do have to. I do have a question for you because yeah. you're the expert in this. Do you? Okay, so the smudging expert. The smudging expert. Have you heard of the bad omens that owls bring? Do you know about those? No, but I had owls at my house two years ago. They kept like nesting above my front door, like, and I, that would come out and check the mail, and they would just stare at me. I was so freaked okay, out. Okay, so I, I need someone to I remove bad them. Bad happened, okay, we're good. Yeah, nothing bad. So here's my no, here's my. I had next to get thing. someone to remove them, like okay, humanely. So yeah, it's my like wife, an owl person had to come and like re like take them somewhere. My wife told me last night because we have an owl in our backyard, like in like this tree. Yeah. And it always is hooing. Yeah. And she and we're laying in bed, and she was like, "I just have this eerie feeling." Like I was like, "Why of the owl?" She was, "Yeah." I was like, "What's well, just, just an owl?" She goes, "No, no, no. owls have like bad omens." Like, no way. Look it up. So I look it up, and owls have bad omens, and it, it it signals like signifies like some sort of death. What? And so she was like, "We need to get that owl out of our backyard." So like, I need you to smudge <laughs> the owl out for me or something. Uh-uh. You got to then. I got. I don't know how to do it, but I gotta get him out. Yes. Is there there are, but they're not, but they're not, he's not, but the problem is the owl is not in my yard. We can't shoot it, can we? No. <laughs> no, you cannot shoot an idea. owl, dude. You can't shoot an owl. But the owl is owl. like the other tree across, like it's not in any of my property. It's just, it's overlooked. It's like, it's like right outside they're of the creepy. boundaries. I mean, they're cool, but creepy. And stupid, apparently. They're dumb. I think they nest this time of year, maybe. Like they, oh, like so you got to get them now, dude. Before this owl has been there for a minute, though. I feel time. like with all birds, very territorial still, about where they're still alive though. So. What they have, like they, they, if you've got eggs in the nest, yeah. you don't stand oh, a chance. Oh no, you're, no, you're that screwed. Owl's you're get screwed. You if you yeah. mess with that. Well, we are, we are definitely we're smudging. Real, we're smudging yeah, hard I right know. now. It was bad though. That kind of scares me, but I didn't know. But you got rid of them. You're good. You know, and now it yeah. doesn't mean you're gonna die. I don't know what that means. <laughs> God, <laughs> But I feel better now. KOD. Right. I mean, I'm die. the it's one with the I'm the one with the owl, so I'm just hoping I don't die. <laughs> but maybe I maybe it's gonna die because I removed them. Maybe they're pissed. I mean, maybe. maybe just I'm the keys. Just maybe. the keys. Oh, right. the the goes. Nice. Just nice. The okay. All right, just the tip. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> that was a nice good touch. Mikey, after just a quick smudge thought, have you ever seen baseball players light the end of a cork to use it as eye black? Back in the day, have you ever really? Seen that? I mean, I, I have seen it done, but like oh, that's only like show the outfield. I've only seen it. Oh, yeah. oh. that's a cute one. That's a cute right. name. Ooh. I kind of like, that, like that too. Yeah. I kind of like that. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. We're no, really good. Down. Uh, I have done it just like just like when you're younger, just because like oh, this is kind of a cool thing, and then realize like it's not really as cool as you as you think. Yeah. Um, no, I think the smudging in baseball would be more about like like Pedro Serrano, like absolutely, absolutely. smudging absolutely. your bat. Tell me Jesus Christ bad, can't hit a curveball? Yeah, you know the bad juju out of your bat. For sure. Um, what, have you done anything? Oh, here we go. I was, I was, I was waiting for this. Is that when he walks out? Is that when he walks out? Who are you smudging? Jabu. Shot the bat in the back of the head. Screw you, Jabu. I'll do it myself. He hits him a line drive foul and it catches him right up. It looks like the biggest blunt ever. It does. Surely that's how it looks. It looks like a Cheech and Chong. Kind of like, yep. <laughs> yep. like a Bob Marley style, like a movie. Type. Yes. Um, like what's the craziest real. thing I've done to yes. like get myself to get out, out of funk? Yeah. Okay, so I just, I just meant in general. I was like, <laughs> yeah, here, hit that. That would yeah. be pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you'll miss a game for sure. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so we've had. There's a few. There's a few. Obviously, the slump busters things. Just, I've never done the, the whole slump buster. So do you know what like red hot, like the like like. So they have this thing called it's like red hot. So you put it. Pictures oh, put it, hot? it's kind of like icy hot, but like uh, there you know, the, there's the no tent. ice, there's no iciness to it. It's oh, like all oh, hot, burn. it's just fucking hot. burns, dude. Disease. Like yeah, it hurts. <laughs> so if you get anywhere in a spot you don't want, it's like hey, this is not good. Well, somebody gave me the suggestion, hey dude, like you gotta change something up. You need to like something's going on. You're not like you know, you just gotta change it up. So. <laughs> And this is not, I'm not the only one that's ever done this. I was, re- <laughs> I was recommended. Let me, let me yeah, preface this gotta, story by me, saying, me, I'm not so the only weirdo in the world. I was told that this is works. He's like, sometimes you just got to be uncomfortable. Like, be, you're, you're already uncomfortable and you don't feel good. So you got to be more uncomfortable. Ooh, wow. It's the Caddyshack well, theory. Well, it's yeah. the Bull Durham where the yeah, lingerie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he says, take a little bit of Red Hot. 
dude. And put it no. on your gooch. No. Wow. So in between, like in your taint. Yes. <laughs> I said, you I was like, I was, I'm desperate. I was hesitant. <laughs> desperate. I was hesitant. I finally did it. What's that supposed to do? It's supposed to I mean, it's it's make sure you got a tingle. You're not thinking <laughs> about, I mean, like, you're not thinking about like, oh, this pitch or will my swing. You're thinking about, oh. fuck, this burns. Yeah, my taint's on fire. You know, yeah. hey, you know what happened? Yes. Three for four, two no. dumps. No. Yep. That's and that's the one. And I'll give an. I have so wait, so wait, so wait, wait. The fo- the obvious follow up has oh, to yeah. be the whole next week. I had had race. Oh, have you stopped? I, I, oh yeah, I don't okay, do it anymore. Okay, okay, I just okay, okay. I get I'll, okay. It's a one game thing, but I need to get let me get in a little roll and then I take a stop. It. Yeah, 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 it wasn't. There you are. There you are. There you are. <laughs> yeah, I had a. Uh, Thanks, Lloyd. Handmade cell in here. Handmade cell. Always. Week, week straight of, <laughs> of hot. Tanks. It is like that. He tries to wait, hide so me. Wait, so how many times did you do it in a row? Five. Five straight games. Five game hit streak. Five games, and then you stopped. Why did well, you stop? Well, yeah, because then I got, then I got good. Kind of just good. got mentally like, over it. Yeah, you just had to get yeah. past. It's, it's not something you can't overdo something. Right. It's something that right. you got to get just to get you out the hole, and then you're good. And got Would me out the hole. Would you do it again? Oh yeah. I mean, I've done. I've done. Player, honestly, do a lot of shit. To honestly, I've done. Long. I have done other things. That was a probably that was a little milder one. How about the weirdest thing that's you've ever heard of one. or seen? What, so if that's your personal. Have you been? Have you? Oh wow, he's blushing. Okay, so there's a guy. There's a guy. There's a guy. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't have asked me this. There's a guy. In our, there's a guy in our clubhouse. Rough Neto door. One of my buddy, One of my buddies. He uh he had this bottle and it was like wrapped. You know how like Michael Jordan had like Michael's secret stuff. So he had this bottle and it wasn't a it wasn't a water bottle. It was just a, a bottle. It was like a, a something, bottle of something. Yeah. And it was it said slump buster on it. I was like, hey, dude, what is that? And he goes, bro. He goes, and so he was like, I'll, 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 I'm not going to tell you about it Come until here, I have to do it. So he's struggling. He goes, all right, it's time. So this bottle is a <laughs> bottle of Nair. Uh-uh. Right? And so what he did was he would go into the shower, and he would Nair his butthole. <laughs> and he would Nair his no hair hairless. He was like, I just want to do something. And so he'd go in there and he would sit <laughs> for five like minutes. How do you not get he, caught in a big he, league clubhouse no, he, doing no, something he, like that? He, he was care. open about yeah, it. Yeah, right, right, Everybody right. was watching. It was his whole thing. <laughs> yeah. like, watch this. It doesn't seem like they care. So then he gets it, wipes it off. Two homers that day. No oh. way. Yep. How many, how many more people? How many more people? <laughs> the Nair th- he had to get another bottle of Nair at some point. That's for sure. He sat with Nair on his butthole for that long. No, no, no. It was for... It was just like five ten p- minutes until he got until he like until it was like whatever. Yeah, he, and then he, he just cleaned used the, the towel. And he cleaned it. And it was good. The poor training staff walk wow. in. It's like, oh, oh my God. fucking god! <laughs> I mean, they are like, two, two dogs. There's nothing. <laughs> right. There's nothing off. Fucking Joey, man. He was <laughs> he was struggling. Yeah, he was in it. Strong. Two home <laughs> runs though. Pick up the towel. Like, oh, he had to go to the nair. <laughs> right. Nothing off. Uh, uh, Ryan Thibodeau tooks and uh, tooks and taints. For a, uh, <laughs> for a show title. Uh, Fat Boy Slim with the $5 donation. We appreciate that very much. We're going to talk New Orleans Saints football coming up here in about 10 minutes with uh, or five minutes with Nick Underhill uh, and get the latest on the Hoot ads to see what the, uh, the state of mind is for New Orleans after losers of two in a row, two bad beats for New Orleans in back-to-back weeks to Atlanta and Tennessee on the road last week. We'll ask Underhill... What to expect this week in Philadelphia, especially the status of Alvin Kamara, uh, and see what's going on with him. Can he go this Sunday? He was limited in practice, which means I think that he'll probably be green lit for Sunday. Um, so we'll ask Underhill that coming up here. Uh, I hope on he's the Joy Club show. I, yeah, uh, my fantasy him, team needs him. When did you get him? What? What pick? Uh, five. No, oh, wow. you gotta five. take him. Yeah. Five. Wow, to it's take a him. steal yeah. at five. Yeah, it was people. I only asked because he went first in my draft, and I, I had the second taken, pick, I mean, and I was going to take Kamara yeah. second. I was like, oh, this will be great. I'm or, happy that I, I'm he's happy. He's worthy that, of a first pick with Breeze, huh? I would think so. Well, I think, I think well, the, I the knew, usage rate has yeah, gone yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, obviously, but you have I, to factor in injuries when that happens. I will, and I'm glad I, ha- I had the fifth or sixth pick and not the third pick because, like, I would have been that guy, and I was high on uh, Saquon Barkley. I was like, he's going to come back strong. I'm going to oh, draft no. him. And I think I convinced some people in our league that, damn, I think he's right, and drafted him. And wow. Smoke screened him. Wow. Yeah. Mikey smoke screened him. It was wow. unintentional. A little, sa- I was, a little I, saving I, offer. Yeah. I was, I was, I was a saving was offer has done that to LSU him. many a times. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a Bama offer. Yeah. Oh, then hell, take him. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey. Saving sitting hey. back there, this dumb sons of bitches. <laughs> Oh, what a bunch man. of morons. I was going to gray shirt him. Yeah, right. I wasn't even going to take him. I wasn't even going to 
I'll tell you, I actually told his dad that. He's going to pay his you know way. I mean? Like, yeah, sure, it's a it's a non-committable offer. Oh, man. <laughs> we don't have the room. Go tell everybody at LSU that you were you were offered by uh, by Alabama. <laughs> they'll run to the, they'll run yeah, to the altar. Right. <laughs> Wait, I like extra innings with Mikey. Did you see okay. that one? Ooh, That's okay. cute. Okay. 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 Right? Uh, extra carpool queen. Let everybody like know what one. you think about the new studio. Yeah. I am so excited. Yes. I mean, we know why. Though. We know why. Why? You're why do you know? Why because you, you have a bathroom. <laughs> that is so true. You got male, female? Or are we all? Oh, we got male, female. There, there is. A, it's a official, bro. Room and a I haven't seen official. it. It's official. 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 There's a conference office. room. There's a whiteboard. There's a kitchen. There's like a, a whole kitchen. kitchen. There's a there's a his hers bathroom. There's a roof deck in the back. Okay, now you got there's me. You got waiting for something for Lloyd. You can throw me a little scrap. There we go. There's great not, little area. It's awesome. Great little area of town. It's a great spot. Um, I drove by last night like a psycho. Yeah, like I, I drove Sophie by too. after basketball practice. Totally out of the way. Of a key? So just no? to let everybody know. <laughs> just just <laughs> outside. Uh, it's like, cool. It should, like, yeah, it's great. should be today, right? Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got a bottle of champagne in the back of my car waiting. As soon as we get the key, <laughs> we will have the uh, we will have the, the unveiling. Yeah, we, and we will have uh, Jordan kind of showing it off through his lens. Um, but we're documenting the whole process. We documented the signing of the lease. We'll document the move in the setup of, of the new studio where we'll have uh, hopefully a couple of rooms where we can kind of change the mood. As we said, Mikey's going to have a show. Uh, Rohan's developing a show. We're talking to other people about developing more shows within the network. Um, so it's, it's look, man, it's exciting times here on the Jordy Collada show. And a it lot is. of that, and all, you know, the, the majority of it um, is really compliments to you all being you out people. there. And uh, yep. and finding us and telling people and coming to to, to the show every day. Um, Essentially, that, that has Cody been, paid for it. Yeah, right. Cody, hey, Cody. Yes. thank you for my show, Cody. <laughs> yes, I'll watch for Dune sure. for you. Watch Dune in the Actually, new I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off a little longer. So I need some new equipment. <laughs> UDL the sequel brought to you by Cody Boudreaux. <laughs> like, here's Blake Air Bear coming in with twenty bucks. Boom. Thank you, Blake. Yes. Thank you, Blake. Amazing. We've got gear for you, buddy. Yeah, we do right there in the back. Uh, we got gear it's for really you, here. bagged up for you, and Doctor Spillers. We have uh, we've got gear for you, bagged up. Yeah, don't you have an appointment uh, coming up? Yes, but I moved it. Ah, oh, Jordy, it was good. It was good. out of fear yeah. or? No, I mean we're busy right now, which <laughs> things are kind of yeah. crazy. Busy? They need two and a half hours for the next oh, visit. That's a long Ooh, time. It's it's the long next time one, the, the real one. That's a commitment. The next one's the real one. That's the next the one real we, tooth. The next one we go like tooth. Replacement. Wait, what, wait, wait, what's going on? I missed this whole that's time. Yeah, this uh, well, that's pretty, actually that's actually a compliment that we've been hanging out so much and you haven't noticed because a lot yeah. of people have walked up to me and like, bro, what's going on with your cat? It depends oh, on the what's wrong. Noticed. I've never noticed anything. Now, uh, now I'm going to get I'm this one replaced. What happened? Uh, I had it knocked out when I was a kid, and then it was the 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 root of it uh, was dying. Bad. And he was like, dude, if you bite through another po' boy, if, if you eat a corn on the cob, yeah. if you eat something, it's, it's over. Gonna stay in there. It's over. It's over. Hmm. So what you have to do is you have to go into the gum and rebuild the bone. Yeah. Right? Damn. So would it be easy just to get would it be easy just to get Colada? You I killed mean, your mouth. Would it be easy just to get a veneer? That's just fake teeth. That's our next step, though. Okay. But you have to have the bone to 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 to, to, to attach. Oh. attach the tooth to. Uh, so what he essentially did. Hmm which I've had two dentists tell me since I had it done, because I explained it to him, I had a teeth extraction done. Like, he extracted my front tooth, which a uh, dentist told me, two dentists have now told me, that is the worst thing that we can do. Are you uh, cheating on Dr. Spillers with another dentist? No, no, no. Like, he came up and said, I heard the story that you told on the air, like, that you had your front yeah. tooth extracted, and there was two dentists standing right there, and he was like, for, for what we do, that's about as painful as it gets. That's about as worse as it. I mean, we've extracted teeth, and we can do it in the back of your mouth, and, it, and we can numb it up. But the front tooth, yeah, the front is brutal. And I'm, t I mean, like it, it is was the like, most sensitive it one. It was one of those, and it's like when you're laying Ugh. there and your body, you know, you're like mm -hmm. clenching mm -hmm. the whole time, and he's like apologizing <laughs> to sorry. you, like, bro, I know that this sucks. Just I know. get it over with. I mean, this sucks. I'm sorry, but I mean, like clenching. What's your, your safe word? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I mean, really? That's what it was. I mean, like, get off of me, man. Oh. Uh, now, just hearing that from the doc, like from Dennis, like when you watch these movies and they're getting tortured and they're getting their teeth pulled out like that. Think about that. God, no. But mm. it's that. See, that's something I can't do. I would spill all the secrets. I'm not a tooth guy. Like, when no, I, even I'm when not I was either. A, when so I was like, a I, kid, that, that was kind of my idea. I never went to the dentist. Where I got in some trouble. You, you know what I mean? That's when I opened up my mouth. He was like, "Oh shit." shit. 
Yeah, you're gonna have to come. A long this time way. since this car's been worked on. We need, we need X-rays. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so you gotta put the heavy to thing over your chest. Room. Did you, you know what I mean? Bite the thing. Too? Uh, like, one cavity. Then you have to fill. That's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. That's not bad. But this process, the teeth extraction, like there's a hole in the back of my tooth. Like everything, you, like everything you, you, you eat, like are you following with that thing? Oh, all day. <laughs> when was the um, first part of this process? Like, how long has it been? Three since months, four months. Four months. So four months, months ago. and then this is the next part. Four part. months ago. So then you have to let. Then you have to allow the bone to grow in. Jeez. So the bone's got to get strong to grip the tooth. Wow. So now he he's like you know the last time he saw he's like three weeks we should be good. So I go back. You know I was supposed to go back yesterday. I moved it until December seventh. Um, we'll keep pushing it off. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that a fear? Is that a fear thing? I'm over the fear thing. Re- at this point, I'm I ready to get it done. I thought that's what I was going to imagine. You're done. ready for it to I'm be over to with. We have a busy morning, though. We do. True. And I, I, I just, I mean, I hate to sound like a douchebag, but I just don't have two and a half hours yeah. to spare right now. That's I mean, not douchebag. That's, that's not douchebag. That's, that's being, that's your hard work. Well, I mean, I hate busy guy. I know. You know what I mean? Don't you hate yeah, the busy, but busy guy? But busy, Sorry, bro. I was too no, busy. No, no, no. But the busy, busy guy is like, hey, I don't want to talk to you because I'm too busy. Yeah. You're the bu- Like, hey, yeah. I can't give you three hours of my day. Yeah, two and a half hours in the middle that's of the day big, is yeah, tough. That's a, big, that's a big commitment. The bad I mean, thing about busy guy is that he likes to let you know that he's busy. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's the, the worst that's, thing. That's, that's the he's wrong CrossFit busy. guy. It, absolutely. Yes. 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 yes he's cross, mm. CrossFit and busy guy are kind of the same. And vegan and vegan person. Right, right, right. Can't we tell you how much I did today? If you call him on the first ring, you get the text, I'm on the other line. Can I call you back? Like, no, forget it, bro. It's not even that important. Sounds like you're busy. Yeah, right. yeah, vegan people. I was calling to ask you a couple of sage rituals, actually. <laughs> uh, we'll be back with Nick Underhill talking New Orleans Saints football daily. We're brought to you by GoFlow IV Health and Spa. Remember, GoFlow is located on Jefferson Highway, Baton Rouge's premier IV and spa. You can find them over there on Jefferson. Uh, stop in and see them. Tell them you heard it right here on the Jordy Colada show. Uh, GoFlow IV Never is... Never too busy. Um, What's that? Never too busy for GoFlow. No, never too busy. In fact, Katie and I have a meeting over there this morning. Baton Rouge's premier medical spa specializing in IV hydration treatments with vitamin infusion. Stop in and see them whether you're suffering from chronic dehydration, athletic performance that you'd like to see. Get your electrolytes replenished uh, and vitamins for your workout. Uh, Illness recovery, hangover cure, chronic illness, skin, hair, and beauty care need a, uh, a little boost. Stop in at GoFlowIV, G-E-A-U-X, FlowIV.com. Nick Underhill talking Saints next. Bears Specialty Meats, home to the finest boudin in South Louisiana. Two spots right here in Baton Rouge and out in Prairieville. Stop in and see them in the Dutchtown Shopping Center on Highway 73 or right here in Baton Rouge on Jefferson Highway. Online, abearsmarkets.com, and they're all over social media. You can find them on Facebook. You can find them on Instagram. Abears combines perfect seasoning with that authentic Cajun flavor. Find out for yourself. Baton Rouge on Jefferson Highway and in Prairieville on Highway 73. abearsmarkets.com. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Abear over at Abear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Abear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Our friend Nick Underhill over at New Orleans.Football. Good to see him out on the road doing some uh, some reports. Brought to you by Matt Bowers Auto Group, who is uh, sponsoring Nick over there at New Orleans.Football. If you have not subscribed to, uh, to Nick's site and uh, you're looking for New Orleans Saints coverage, uh, he is simply the best in the business, man. He's got the best relationships. He's got the best information, and his website is very easy to follow, and you get 
uh, a YouTube channel along with that that comes with a podcast. Check him out online at uh, neworleans.football and, of course, the Twitter account at Nick underscore Underhill. Nick, you and I have been doing this on the air for a couple of years. Last week was a low point for me when I prefaced the question of Odell Beckham Jr. saying that you said he was not going to be in New Orleans. As soon as I opened it up, you said, I've never said that, (laughs) Um, which I felt like a total (laughs) asshole, and I was wrong for that. Uh, But he ended up in L.A. Uh, How surprising was that to see Odell finalize the list of Kansas City um, at New Orleans, uh, and he had one more on there, but he ended up going to L.A. Green Bay. It, 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 was, it was a little bit surprising, you know, just because of the way that, that the teams were coming out there, but it wasn't overall surprising. Just kind of hearing some stuff on the background throughout the week, like how it was building. It, it was, you know, oh, he's going here, and then the next day, oh, Aaron Rodgers called, and now he's leading this way. It was like kind of like a wacky process as you were kind of hearing the stuff going on behind the scenes. And, you know, the few people I was talking to, if I had just been talking to one person, I wouldn't have believed anything they were telling me because, like, I, I have never heard a process kind of play out the way this one did. But I had multiple people telling me the same things, and it was just kind of like, all right, I guess this is, like, really how it's going. And, you know, I think he, he just kind of enjoyed the recruitment process. And, and you know, I, I think genuinely, like, day by day, sometimes, you know, hour by hour, like, things were changing a little bit for him. And, you know, honestly, last week, early in the week, it felt like he was going to come to New Orleans. I think there was a lot of momentum toward that. And I think that, you know, the, the team was kind of expecting him to pick them early early in the week. And then it just, you know, as it played out, it kind of got further and further away. And, you know, the Rams swooped in sort of at the end quietly. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's surprising because you kept hearing about these certain teams. But just, just with the way that wave was going, the fact that someone caught it late and kind of stole it, 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 it wasn't altogether shocking just because it, it, this has felt different than, than any any free agent process I've really, you know, been been in tune with since I've been covering the league. Nick Underhill from New Orleans. Football. You published the per, uh, participation report yesterday from both Philadelphia and New Orleans Saints practice. Uh, Philadelphia's got a, a lot of guys out as well, but New Orleans is missing some key figures like Taysom Hill, Teron Armstead, and Ryan Ramchek. Malcolm Roach is on that list as well from uh, did not participate in yesterday's practice, but Alvin Kamara is there in a limited role. What do you expect from him on Sunday? I think he has a chance to play. You know, last week it, it was day to day. He has a slight MCL sprain. It's the same injury he had in 2019, not as serious, and you know kept him out last week. And I think he, he's going to probably go through the week and just see how it responds. Going into the the game last week, you know, the thing I was hearing was that like if if it was like a playoff situation, he could have toughed it out and found a way to to play through it, but obviously you don't want to push that this early in the season and risk many more games uh, trying to play through an injury. So if if nothing has gone wrong since then, it seems like there's a decent chance he'll play this week. You know, I expect him to be limited throughout. We saw him in practice yesterday. We only get like a 20-minute window, and they're doing stretch and individual drills and warm-ups, and nobody's running at full speed. But you know, jogging, going, going at that half speed during the portion that we could see him, I didn't notice anything – with, with the way he was moving, there wasn't a limp. It didn't look like he was favoring the leg at all. So that seemed like a good sign. Uh, you know, I, I think it's probably still up in the air, though. Like right now, if you had to make a call on, on Sunday, I think it's probably like a 50-50 shot. But if he gets through today, looks okay, gets through Friday, I, I think there's probably a decent chance that he plays. Uh, Two-game losing streak right now. How brutal was last Sunday for the Saints? They had that game won a couple of times and probably should have won it against a really good team in the NFL. Uh, you could see Sean Payton's uh, frustration, obviously, following that one, whether it was calls or, or, or penalties. Um, but w- what have you made over the Saints' play the last two weeks? I think that they've blown two significant opportunities. And yeah. if they had capitalized on both of them, they'd be sitting right up at the top and, and be in great position. And they should be there. I mean, the, the Falcons game, they blew it on a busted coverage late late in the game and that that's a really really hard way to lose and then last week it just it felt like they found 15 different ways to lose that game and you, you do start with the officiating that call shouldn't happen those guys shouldn't be impacting the outcome of games and, and they should add an interception there but outside of that i mean look they had four or five different things you, you could point to that were extremely obvious mistakes that that cost them that game and it, it's surprising to see a team that's as well coached as they are that that's 
you know, is, you know, I, I guess I would call it a mature team. I mean, they've been around for a while. A, a lot of these guys have played together. They're, they're, you know, veterans. Teams like that shouldn't be making the kind of mistakes that they're making. I mean, getting Adam Troutman jumping on a two point mm-hmm. conversion. So you've got to move from the two to the seven. I mean, that's a, that's a horrible moment. And, you know, I, I do wonder when Nick Van Eck comes back and he's getting closer from coming back from, uh, injured reserve. I wonder if you, if you start looking at Troutman and, and figure out if he should be playing as many snaps as he is and if maybe he needs to take a step back until he's kind of more in tune with everything that needs to be going on because I, I think that, you know, with the fumble earlier in the season and, and this two point, I mean, I think you can look at two games that he's directly influenced by making avoidable mistakes. So that that's something they got to look at. Um, you know, they got to start catching passes. Yeah. Guys are guys are getting open and, you know, you got the ball hitting Kevin White in the shoulder falling to the, the ground. You got out of the last two weeks at least six drop passes and if you're a little bit a harsher critic you could take that number all the way up to nine um uh, um passes that should have been caught so it, it, it's tough right now for them they're they're finding ways to beat themselves and I, I i'm not calling this a bad team but sean payton always says you know good teams find a way to win bad teams find a way to lose the last two weeks they found ways to lose games they got to fix that you lose a third game in a row to, to philadelphia you know this season's very quickly getting away from you and I, I honestly feel like this week's game is kind of a must win for them. I, I think they have to I think they have to win this winnable game. Then you got uh the Bills and the Cowboys, which are, are gonna be tougher games. But you look at the schedule going through it, there's five games they should win. They need all five of those, I think, to get into the playoffs and you start losing some of those and you keep this trend up of losing the, the teams you should beat, you know, the, the season's gonna be it's it's gonna get away from them quickly. Um, and more frustrating goes uh, more frustration goes into it because you can look back at least last week's loss and say it, it, it wasn't on the quarterback play. They got good quarterback play from Trevor Simeon. What have you made of his uh, of his action last Sunday and kind of leading up to this week versus Philadelphia? Yeah, in two weeks in a row, I, yeah, I think yeah. he's played really well. I, I think he played well enough for them to win both those games, especially last week, like you said. And you, you take you take the six drops, the ones that I don't think require any interpretation there's 69 passing yards in two games that should be added to his total you add the other three and you're you're over you know i did it last time i think it was like 129 yards or something like that because there were three deep balls that that could have been caught and didn't end up getting caught so i mean you take that two games he's he's right around 350 yards in both games you start adding those stuff that stuff in or maybe even a little bit higher so He's, he's doing a really good job. He's getting the ball where it needs to be. Uh, he's gotten their short passing game going. That was something that, you know, early in the season, we were kind of looking at the receivers and wondering if there was something happening with the receivers and, and Jameis wasn't able to get the ball there. But I think, I think, uh, Simeon's style of play has, has kind of helped with some of that stuff. Obviously, you don't have the deep components and it's not as, uh, explosive, but he's protecting the ball, putting it where it needs to be. And he's someone that you can win games with. For sure, um, you know, as long as everything else around them is is working right, and you know, in the fourth quarters, especially, in, they are seeing some favorable coverages in those fourth quarters. Things soften up a little bit. Teams start playing a little bit more prevent. They aren't rushing the passers much, so it gets a little bit easier to, to rack up yards later in games when you're playing from behind and teams are trying to protect their lead. So I think some of that has, has kind of infused his performances and elevated them a little bit. Um, Whereas if they were ahead, I don't know if they'd have the same opportunities. But overall, he's he's doing a really good job, and I, I don't feel like you know losing Jameis has been this disastrous thing with with the way he's playing. I think they're getting comparable quarterback play, and they they can win games with him as as long as the defense is keeping points off. You know, you need the receivers to start catching passes, and, and people got to start helping him. But there are some areas that I, I do think that have been a little bit better since uh, he's taken over. At Nick underscore Underhill is where you find him on Twitter. You can subscribe to the site at neworleans.football. We asked you about Kamara. He was on the participation report yesterday. He was a limited role there. But they've got guys with a lot of DNPs, including Ty Montgomery, Taysom Hill, Teron Armstead, Ryan Ramchek, and Malcolm Roach. Um, any update on those guys and expectations for Sunday? I mean, that's a hell, that's a hell of a group. Yeah, so Ramchek's kind of been battling this, this knee for a while. I've been hearing a couple things about that. Um, and I think he missed last Wednesday, too, and then came back. So I, I'll be curious to see if he comes back and if it's just a rest day. You know, Armstead missed last week, so I think that's probably uh, something that you look at and maybe expect to happen again. Taysom with the foot, 
I think during this game, I mean, you, you could notice some moments where his balance and stuff looked a little bit off. Like he looked a little bit different uh, running. And, and I think you could detect that foot injury in that game. So that's a major thing to keep an eye on. I, I'm not expecting to see Ty Montgomery after Trevor Simeon removed the finger from its uh, spot on his hand. I don't know if you guys saw that, but that was absolutely disgusting. Yes. Uh, and then, yeah, some of these other guys, you know, Roach is, is, is a hit if they can't play to their run defense. Uh, Passanio's a hit to the, you know, the, that front. I mean, it's a lot of guys on that on that list. And, I mean, that's just kind of how it's been for them the whole season. I guess you look at it and think that, you know, they're playing the Eagles' winnable game. Uh, that's the way they played the last two weeks. I don't know if you want to take anything for granted. But, yeah, definitely a couple major uh, situations to monitor throughout the week. Nick, this is probably an unfair question to you because you don't cover LSU and you don't have any interest in college football, but is there an NFL name that makes any sense that could be next at LSU? There's a guy inside of our Bunker app that says that Jason Garrett to LSU Ugh. is something Ugh. that he's heard. <laughs> it's something that anybody wants. But is there a name out there that, that, that you may have heard or somebody that, that is interested in college that maybe somebody to look out for? You know, I'm not. I'm not really sure. You know, the one guy that I kind of come back to, and I don't know if, if some of the stuff that that's happened to Colorado would be an issue, but like Eric Bieniemy, if he can't get an NFL job, I think he could just light up stuff at, at the college ranks. But I, you know, I think there's maybe other other things that you would have to sort through to to see if it would work. But he seems more than due for a shot. Um, you know, the the league for whatever reason keeps passing him up. You know, beyond that, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I guess like a, a Ryan Nielsen would make some sense. He, he did a great job at NC State, got a lot of players to the league. I don't know if he's ready for a head coaching job, but uh, it, at some point, you know, I, I, I could definitely see that for him, and it would make a lot of sense. And he just kind of seems like a really good leader of men and, and you know, someone that, that would be good at, you know, forming people, getting them ready to go off into the world or, or to go off into the NFL. And I, I think he would do a really good job at that. But, man, as far as, you know, a tie to LSU, I'm, I'm, not, mm-hmm. I'm not really – Sure, uh, Jason Garrett seems like a disastrous idea. So I would, I would <laughs> Thank you. Not I'm, glad, I'm glad. I'm glad. We've already got somebody uh, clapping yes. enough on the sidelines. Yeah. Does, does does Lincoln Riley make sense in the NFL? Have you heard his names outside of the Dallas Cowboy circle? His name comes up every single year. I think uh-huh. everybody w- would be interested in him if, if he was willing to to go to the league. But I, I don't know if that's something that he wants to do. I mean, every year they put out these lists, and, and you know kind of like the hype list, the young guys that are coming up. And he's on there every single year. And people talk about him every single year. And, you know, I, I don't know if he'll, if he'll ever make that jump. If, if I were him, I'd, I'd be looking at that LSU job. I think life's a little bit easier uh, in Louisiana, even though they've, they've done a good job putting a good program around him. But I think, uh, I think he'd do a better job at LSU if that's someone name that's been coming up. Uh, how bad did you feel for Catherine Terrell last weekend and asking those <laughs> questions to Sean Payton? <laughs> Yeah, that was tough. That was tough for sure. Uh, she, she ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time. It, 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 it look, with, with each season like that, like it's yeah. just yeah, there's no winning. You, sometimes you, yeah, and sometimes you just got to keep asking questions to keep it going because everybody in the room is a little bit uncomfortable. And I, I think she was just trying to keep the conference going and make sure you didn't walk off the podium. Right. Because like when he's going like that, you're kind of like, man, like how do I, like you're thinking about the question in your head, and you're like, shoot, I need to get my words right, and I need to game plan this. He's gonna be talking can't. to your dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had the hands it, it in the bad. pocket, bro. He was <laughs> he was oh, ready bro. to fire. I mean, he wanted out. And it, it, it's it's been about four years, five years since like we've encountered Sean in in that state. Like he's been pretty calm for a while. And this was like the first time, like. In 15, when you walked into those those rooms, like, you were ready for that. And this was just like, oh, man, like, I didn't know this guy was still around. And, and there he was back up there. So, yeah, I, I felt before. terrible for her. I'm not going to tell you the play, Catherine. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> of course it changed from the two to the seven. Like, oh, God. Uh, have a great day. Stay safe in this weather, man. Yeah, take it easy, guys. All right, bro. There's uh, Nick Underhill checking in this morning from New Orleans. Football. Nick underscore Underhill is where you find him on Twitter. He is the best in the business at covering the New Orleans Saints. You will not find anybody with better relationships or better information, and we appreciate him being here uh, with us every uh, every Wednesday. We, we had to back him up uh, to this Thursday here. Uh, Daily, we're brought to you by Falaya Real Estate. Get in touch with our friend Barrett Blondo over there, 225-939-6153. Remember, Falaya is online at falaya.com. Uh, everything is changing around us. The technology around buying and selling your house is too. Falaya is making it a, a lot easier. From virtual tours to push-button offers, Falaya is redefining how real estate is sold. 
For more information, visit online, falaya.com, or download the app inside of your Apple and Android stores, falaya.com, or call Barrett Blondo, our friend, at 225-939-6153. 939-6153. I want to talk some baseball with Mikey. Okay, we'll be Let's back do and do that. I need to relight the sage here in the in the. Uh, yeah, get the mood, that you got to build the sage yeah. tree. Get the yes. mood right. I'm trying, to get, the, I am trying to get the Ducks wings back on before spring football here. Um, and we are, uh, it is recruiting season. Until then. It is recruiting is, season. What, wait, what's the next step? You're off season? So, same there's a, league. There's a spring football league uh, that cranks up in February okay. and plays February, Time. March, and uh, in April. Um, and I have got the uh, the Ducks enrolled in both the New Orleans and the Baton Rouge League. <laughs> shocking. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> shocking. Two games on Friday night, so Jordan, load up the load up the caravan. Uh, You're absolutely. traveling. Not today. Not today. This Friday? February. No, no. February. In February. You, you got time, time, dude. You got time. You, some time. you can actually upgrade he equipment and get more personnel if we need it. Start hey, have, we, have we made any? Have we made any splash moves though? We've made one. Ooh, already? Is it is it, is it is it ready for public or no, no uh, public knowledge? Well, I want to put you know We could go public with it, but I'm not ready okay. to go public okay. with it because I, like I don't that. want to tip off other teams. I like that. Did All I did, I got, I got team? two. I got. Did you two poach? Texts. Are you a poacher? Oh yes. Yeah, he did. Uh, Jordy is hated. Poacher. Jordy is hated amongst the hated. He's playing fantasy football over there. Nobody can. Nobody can doubt his commitment. He is all in. Mike, I'm recruiting at pregame. He's the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, just can see see it. Hey, you see what we're doing over here? You want to yeah, be part of this? Yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah. I mean, I can see him kind of looking at the pregame. Hey, 1 7. <laughs> we got a spot for you, man. I yeah, see I can, how you, you move laterally. Every week. <laughs> you can pull them flags a little bit better, but we'll refine that once you get to the Ducks. Uh, we can make you. We can we can work. So where's your dad? Let me, let me see your dad. He's actually the coach. My dad's the coach. coach. Ah, okay, perfect. cool. We're gonna kick your teeth in and then take your best player. Here's your, your best friend. Your son. We're gonna take your son. He's gonna play for me instead. Uh, all right, Katie talking baseball with Matok next here on the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Papa Earl's, the fine spice. Originating right down here in South Louisiana by our guy Mark Pop Norman. Developed it back in 2018 and won Amazon's Newcomer of the Year in 2019. They pride themselves in having 30% less salt and sodium than the leading brands at the same price point. You can find them locally. Look for Papa Earl's at Rouse's, Calandro's, Matherne's, High Neighbor, and more. True Blue Water. True hydration at its finest. Right now, you're only a few minutes away from getting your five-gallon water delivered to you, just like we are over here at the UDL. All you got to do is log on to truebluewater.com. That's T-R-U, bluewater.com. The website's fantastic over at truebluewater.com. You can get your service and find out how quick it is. You can schedule a delivery, even hop on the billing system right there at truebluewater.com. T-R-U, bluewater.com. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com, or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Flow IV and Spa, 7970 Jefferson Highway is where you can find them or you can simply go online to goflowiv.com. Go Flow IV Spa is a medical spa that specializes in IV hydration with vitamin infusion. At GoFlow IV Spa, they can help you with a wide range of issues, from skin care to illness recovery, athletic performance, hangover cure, chronic illness, and even chronic dehydration. GoFlowIV.com or stop in and see them, 7970 Jefferson Highway.
Starting a Jordy's starting a fire. You know, yeah, <laughs> starting to chill the fuck out. <laughs> Kicked off of YouTube for this. Definitely. <laughs> That's going to get us kicked off for sure. For sure. <laughs> Practicing witchcraft at the UDL. Are we back? Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. The intro Never been more back. The intro is just, back, just the same. We're back, dude. <laughs> just the same. Did we ever leave? I mean, this is serious. <laughs> it's gotten crazy up in here. We are saging the studio on our last couple of days here. How many, what do, we, what do you think, over under? How many, what do you think, three weeks? Three weeks? I think we can do it in under three weeks. Ooh, I love that. Wow. I love the I mean, I, I know Thanksgiving week is kind of a, but. A hey, I'm here. She's motivated. I'm here. We're all here. Yes. She We're all here. Motivated. Yes, I'm motivated. We but think about in. it. We could literally all put stuff in our cars from this room yeah. and Trucks, move it. A couple in of yeah, one. No, well, the equip- <laughs> this is not the issue. It's to no. get the wire. No, no, no. My biggest concern is it's making sure that we are up. wired up correctly from the jump. What do we need for that? We need an integrate. We need an integrated automated place <laughs> out there. I need. I need. I need a <laughs> young, hungry, hungry. integrated. Technician, technical wiring, and us just promote the hell out of you, and you make sure that we oh, yeah. sound we need pristine. We need some really no, equipment. no, 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 no equipment yet. No, okay. no equipment. Yet. No, no. <laughs> okay, let's get wired he up. Need, he doesn't need. Equipment. Let's get well, wired. I need equipment for my show. We gotta wire something. So let's get wired we need the up. Equipment to be wired up too, right? Um. Not at this point. Not at this point. <laughs> just the wiring. No. Um, just so you yes, know how we want to make sure. I, mean, yeah, I don't. I don't wires. want. I don't want Mikey's microphone ever popping in and out again. I don't yeah. want the sound of the light. I don't want the sound of the AC. Well, that's why the Mikey microphone pops when you have to. You have no. to change. No. Okay. No. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> you should have seen right this room before we got. Before we moved in. <laughs> I did. I moved yeah. in. <laughs> I'm talking AC about then. pre furniture. Nice haze. This but is, no, uh, it's kind of fallen back to its roots here. Yeah, that's how it looked <laughs> yes. when we moved everything. Oh, there around. you are. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, baseball. Are we talking baseball or are we talking studio uh, still? Um, I'm kind of stuck on the studio okay, for a we'll minute. All right, let's studio. go to the studio. Let's um, still talk about the studio. So I'm more fired up that we, we can move the whole business operation over there. Like Katie and I have a meeting at 9.15 this morning. We could do that at the office. We could do, yes. that, at the, we could do that at the UDL. Come to us. I could sit and work do instead of UDL. doing it at kids' well, practices. We all, yes. I find we all like rooms in schools and sit down and work. Yesterday, um, people were playing dodgeball over my head while I was sitting yeah. and working at school because <laughs> it was raining outside. What a dangerous no spot. Did you I get hit? I was in there by myself and then they came in and oh. they had to because it was raining. Not more was, awkward moments than, so than the awkward. adult that's by themselves that gets hit in the face with the ball. And then so what do you do? Because you know you're not supposed to be there and you're like, yes. you know they're supposed to have fun. Yes. But it's like, you can't and get you know mad, but you are, are mad. laughing. Yes. Everybody's really laughing. Awkward. I knew a couple of them, but Ugh. it was still really awkward. Yeah, no, and no, then there's the one shithead that wants to hit the kid. It wants to hit the parent over there. just girls. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes it, it was better. just some girls. Cody but. Boudreaux with a two dollar donation Let's says go. he's weird, but you guys are scaring me. <laughs> no, Hi, Cody. Yeah, Come on I'm in, bro. Weird. It gets a little weirder. It's all right. It's all good. Yeah, we're weird. Put your okay. hand in the box, Cody. Put your hand in the box. Uh, Mike Smith asks at Colada Show, Carpool Queen, are you going to decorate your bathrooms with candles and etc. Well, at yes, the new spot? Mike, uh, of course I uh, am. Uh, I mean, I'm, I mean, a, I'm pretty a, sure there's a shower in one of the bathrooms wow. as well. Wow. Like I'm thinking, wow. like I don't have to like come dressed great. in my Pilates clothes. Yeah. I could yeah, actually change. I got, like, I can do my baseball workouts. I can go leave from there and go yes. straight to the field. Uh, well, that's actually what we're trying to create—a place where just people are hanging out and making content. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Gerald Jr., what will be the content of Mikey's show? Good question. Well, that is a good question. So it's gonna be a little bit of everything, a little bit of like what's going on right now in sports, but like not necessarily like you know 
evaluating like, hey, what happened on the yeah. defense? It's more about third down run defense. Yeah, we're we're talking more we're talking <laughs> yeah. more run about fits. can they get them straight? <laughs> I mean, we're talking more about like the ins and outs, kind of like the mentality of what's going on. We're gonna have a lot of really cool guests come on. So it's gonna be like a little bit of me, a little bit of Lloyd in the beginning, uh, the guest, and then end of it is kind of like. Have you ever seen like the Pat McAfee show? It's okay. gonna be a little bit similar to that, just not an everyday deal. Yeah. Um, we have some people that are kind of are pretty eager to to come on here and, and give some some interviews. So we're yes. gonna have some really cool cool people. It's a, it's a, it's a great perspective. It's a different perspective. I mean, it's a, a view from a, a, a professional athlete um, and connections and conversations and insight. A little bit behind the It'll scenes be, and, 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 and what we want to also create is kind of like that J.J. Redick feel like last season, the yep. last couple of years where he's been in you know, in an NBA season, but he's still producing his podcast where he's in a hotel room and he's going live on Zoom or he's going uh, live in the locker room or, you know, he's somewhere where, you know, he's just on the road. You're kind of seeing the life of a, of a professional athlete behind the scenes and all the while he's giving you uh, interesting takes and interesting content. So we're looking forward to it, man. It's yeah, kind of what we're too. evolving into over here at the Jordy Collada Show, a network of personalities and talented people that can come in and use the platform. And, and if y'all have, if people listening, fans of the show, fans of Jordy's show, if y'all have ideas or people that y'all want to hear or things you want to talk about, I mean, this is for, not just for me, I mean, this is for y'all. So yes. if y'all have anything y'all want Let's specifically... Get him a, um, let email address. Yes. Up and moving. Boom. See? Email address. Uh, right yep. Yep. Just when uh, just when you thought we couldn't make it more <laughs> official. <laughs> yes. Shake uh, my here's right your now. coffee mug and your email address. Yeah, if, there's, if there's like I have here's fortunate card. fortunately for me, I, I've been able to be around some really, really cool people and made some really cool friends along the way. So I have access to Got the relative. Absolutely. Dude, right? the Open relative. it up. Show you know, off. So I, I would, uh, you know. Show off. The bigger we make it, the bigger the bigger guests we can cancel. Uh, Nick Obviously, Quill. first bouncer, Nair, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> has to be. Yes. Or uh, Red Hot. Red Hot. Yeah. Has to be. Uh, Nikwilis Dilwad says, I feel like the douche now because I think I'm busy guy. Ooh. Um, he does. A little self-awareness. He does let himself know hey, the but chat, no, hey, self- you got to go to work. A little hey, self-awareness. I can't, I can't give you the douchebag title because you are self-aware. Douchebags yes. are not self-aware. Yes. yes. They don't know. That's true. Um, That's very true. So, yeah, just work but on it. But you can transition out of busy guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just answer no, a text don't or two. Tell, I can make, have to tell you. Yeah, yeah, you still can tell make us time what you're guy. doing. Yeah, yeah, right. Hey, what's going on? I mean, I'm at a meeting right now, and I'm talking to a guy on the other line about some white walls. And what's I, going on? And I got CrossFit at 1130. I don't know if I have time for you right now. It's well, just, I mean, yeah. the baby needs formula. I mean, you're going to have to take care of that. I'm too busy for that right now. I'll call you later. Leave that for home. <laughs> um, all right, what are your baseball questions for Mikey? Okay, so the free agency period is officially open, I was reading. But I also mm-hmm. read about this December 1st yep. lockout or potential for a lockout uh, that said that it could, like, pause activity for a while. So what yeah, does that so, mean? Okay, so the, technically you don't become a free agent. Like, free agency doesn't technically start until five days after the World Series ends. Right? Okay. That's technically when the baseball season is over. Okay. So I'm a, I became a free agent then. So it's been about probably two weeks or so since free agency started. Um, and what that means is basically, you know, it's what it says. You, you can, any team can talk to you. You can, you know, negotiate. You can just kind of figure out where you're going to be. Uh, for me, it's a little bit different than, like, the big-time free agents. Like, you're going to see a lot of guys sign – Right now, like you've seen, like Verlander just signed back with the oh, Astros. Saw mm-hmm. You saw, you saw uh, Noah Syndergaard signed a one-year deal, and a lot of these deals that they're signing now are going to be uh, one year. Now, uh, Jose Barrios, who's I saw that. Right, he made some money. For the, yeah, seven year, one hundred and fifty something million. Yeah. He's the ace for the Blue Jays. Um, so you'll see some deals like that. Those are going to happen first, and then you're going to have the guys like me, which would be considered like minor league free agents. So you sign a dual contract. If you're in the big leagues, you make the X. If you're in AAA. Like a two-way leagues, contract. Yes, kind of. Exactly. Um, so like that's going to be interesting, you know, going to your point about the December 1st. So what that means is um, every professional team, baseball or organization, baseball, basketball, football. And I know a lot of people, since football is kind of king, you know, everybody remembers like when the CBA, the collective bargaining agreement was going on, they had all these issues and and that's the same thing with baseball. So in 1994, baseball had a strike. Yeah. They were going through the CBA and they sh- they didn't play. They, they stopped the season, they didn't play in 1994 year. It just it was a bad deal for baseball. It was not a good look. And then lost a lot of the young fan base. Lost a lot of the young fan base. And then over time they built it up, then you had the 
the home run era where everybody was taking steroids, but they didn't know at the time. <laughs> and so, but that brought baseball back. You had the home run race of Manny of, uh, I'm giving you the history now. No, I asked for Sammy it. Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire. Yeah, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire home run race of uh, two, uh, 1999. And that brought baseball back. That right. brought a lot of fans back and made it fun. And then it just kind of hit. And then our union became the strongest union in all of sports because we, they, we shoot, we showed them, Hey, we, we, we'll strike. Well, not uh, we're 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 good with committed. This out. Yeah, we're committed to making this right for us, and so it, it's been good for a while. And then it started kind of not going back down, but we weren't getting the things that we wanted. We made some compromise that we didn't like. Um, the the free agent market, the way you how long it takes to get to be a free agent, is a little outdated. Like technically, if a team if you get to the big leagues, it takes you six full seasons in Major League Baseball to become a free agent. Damn. Gosh. And now the way baseball oh, wow. is getting younger, and they don't pay the older guys, like it's just not fair. Is it four in football? It's you have uh, when you sign your rookie deal, you have four with a fifth year option. Uh-huh. And base, but that's like in, in base, but but that's a contract. Like in baseball, before you get to arbitration, you're not signing; you're in rookie deal, and like you could be sent up and down. It's not guaranteed that you're going to be making the minimum. Right, you saw what happened with Chris Bryant, like how they want to hold that right, kind of over right. your head. Like, they have the, a, like, like days, the time and days are a huge thing in, uh, in baseball. And so December 1st happens, and that's when the CBA expires. Oh, okay. And so they have to, we have to renegotiate. We've been in talks. Uh, the union and the, and the owners have been in talks. Um, but, like, there's going to be a lockout. So which, which that means is you're not going to see any major league major league deals happen after December 1st if we don't have a deal by then. And when does that end? Like, no one knows when that, that comes doesn't, to an end. Nobody that knows. Whenever we end. come to an ad- agreement and sign up, but for me, since I'm not technically on the roster, like on like a, a, f- uh-huh. a 40 Official. man roster, yeah. officially on a roster, and I'm not... I'm Your not, rights aren't owned by a team. Right, and I'm, my rights aren't... I'm not ne- necessarily in the union. So I could still technically sign with a team and... Let this whole CBA thing play out now. So that wouldn't affect you then. That lockout period wouldn't affect. No, you. yes and no. So a lot of the things that we're trying to find, we're trying to fix in the CBA is the arbitration time. So I have over three years of I have three years of time in the big leagues. Right now, technically, I would go through my first year of arbitration. Now, if they come back and say, well, minimums are raised, and that only takes two years to go to arbitration, then that could affect some of my money that I would negotiate. Um, but you can negotiate. You can do different stuff. Negotiate percentage, like hey. He needs to get X amount of percentage over minimum or, or whatever. Yeah. So there's things that need to go into the negotiation process, but I technically could still sign, be on a team, and then, you know, whenever every, whenever the, the CBA gets signed. Then you get back you into go, the union fold. So I get, yeah, and I could technically still go to spring training and still work out at the facility because I'm not te- – I think that's how it was. Like, it's – there's a lot of, like, weird gray area stuff, but I, I'm pretty sure that I could still go – Work out and train under the team since I'm not on uh, technically in the union right now since I'm not on the roster. Okay. There's a lot of moving parts to baseball. There's a lot of weird rules. Yeah, there are. In the front office stuff, <laughs> and you know, I, I've fortunate for me, I've had a, a really good agent that's explained it to me through 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 along along the way, and I've gone, I've been up and down, and I've had to see the the terrible parts of it and the good parts of it, and so it's. I'm pretty familiar with it, and it's just, you know, it's kind of a wait-and-see game, which sucks. But yeah, it, it does. Who's your agent? Uh, I'm with CAA. Okay. So uh, my agents, I have two, uh, Jeff Barry and Matt Ricardo, are both my agents. Matt Ricardo's an LSU guy. He comes here. Not, he's not from LSU. He's from California, UCLA guy. Smart guy, then. UCLA guy, lives in Nashville, but he's been uh, he's been to some games. He's a, he's a good dude. He's, he's a little younger. Nice. I've gotten him into Fred's and, and bogeys back in the day, like right after I graduated, so... So he's busy some, right now. This is like really busy. They're time busy. For so him. last week was uh, last week was the GM meetings. Mm-hmm. So he went out to the GM meetings and he talked to them. Um, so he was there for all, all week. So we had a, we talked at the end of last week. Um, yeah, the, and there's some action going on. There's some there's some interest for sure. That's uh, exciting. You know, but like I That's said, I a, a lot of these in, a lot of these teams want to wait and see what they're going to try to do with like the guys that they're trying to give money to yeah. and see how who they can get, who they can't get. Um, and you just go from there. We'll wait and see mm-hmm. game. Wait yeah. and see. Hurry up and wait. Yeah. Anything else, Carpool Queen? That was my Curiosity. question. Curiosity. Love uh, that. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Um, well. LSU basketball tonight. Tigers are taking on McNeese. That game will tip off at 7 o'clock inside of the Maravich Center. Uh, LSU will go up against a uh, LSU right now, 3-0. and 
Uh, obviously, starting the season, a very exciting run. McNeese coming in one and two over the weekend. They lost to a uh, a champion, or excuse me, beat uh, a uh, a champion Christian University out of uh, Texas uh, earlier this week. Uh, their the losses, the champion Christian. Sounds like a I thought, I thought you meant like they beat a champion <laughs> in Christian, Christian University. University. I mean, I was trying to beef them up when I was so <laughs> reading, uh, reading. I mean, their losses are against SMU and TCU. There you okay. go. There, there, we go. go. there we go. There we go. We're back. We're back. Tough schedule. All right. All right. All right. Um, LSU has won 25 like consecutive regular season <laughs> and postseason games versus Louisiana schools. Uh, Tigers, big favorite tonight. Uh, obviously, versus McNeese. Uh, they do have Belmont coming up well, on I Monday. It's going go. to be a really get, good game. Go. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but, um, but McNeese tonight, uh, 7 o'clock tip-off at the Marriott Center. Uh, a lot of the same what you see. You heard uh, Will Wade talking about it yesterday. McNeese is a very good defensive team, so they will be challenged at least early on. Oh, they are? Defensively. I didn't okay. Uh, I, 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 University, I, love, I love Will Wade's interview when he said, Everybody's talking about how good they were, and, like, this is, and you just rattle off the list of what they have to get improve on. Oh, yeah. I love that. No, he'll he'll mm-hmm. never uh, publicly no. compliment that. It, it's very that. uh, it's, what you, I mean, I hate to say this, it's Saban. very Saban esque. Yeah, like, where hey, it is, well, he's like, talking to his team. Yeah, right. absolutely. Oh, he's yeah. doing it through the press. Like you're all going to have to see this. Right. Wherever he is, like, oh, we don't do this well. We don't do this well. I'm not even sure if the nutri- like the nutrition like the nutritionist is on like watch. Yeah, hey, like, I don't know if we're feeding him the right. That's the difference, though. Jesus, that's the difference, though. He's like they're three and zero and doing okay. He focuses on that kind of stuff. A lot of people don't focus. On that. But don't. he'll just take blind shots just to let them know, yeah. like, hey, nobody here Absolute. should nobody ever be is safe. Don't nobody get here should be comfortable. Nope. Who's three and zero? Oh? Right. Yeah. That, Nobody's three and zero. Oh. Oh. I don't yeah. want to hear that. I mean, Who have we yet? Exactly. Uh, so they will uh, take on McNeese tonight. The Belmont game on Monday is going to be must watch yep. basketball. I think if you are, is it uh, nationally televised? Uh, let's see here. Let me see. Um, get a little update on this one. Uh, it should be if it's not. Oh, but I mean, you know, I I mean, it's like on maybe SEC with the uh, with the SEC, SEC yeah, uh, SEC Network. Okay, It'll be on SEC Network. Um, and then tonight's game will be on SEC Network Plus. Um, so, does Will Wade <laughs> with the way he schedules these things? Does it matter because of how he got shafted by the NCAA last year? Is he trying to prove a point? Like, look, our our RPI is this. We play. We have this many quad one wins, quad two wins. And then you still end up with a bad seed last year. Like, what? What more can he do scheduling wise, and also, and now at this point, winning wise, that they would be considered a top three seed, top four Take over seed? The SEC. Right, yeah, but it seems do. like he doesn't. They'll never consider LSU for that because of his. This is the way that they can stick him. It's the only way that they have at this point is to give them a bad seed. Yeah, and they will at every turn that they can. Yeah. I mean, you have to win the league. You'd have to, you know, that's that's what he knows he has to do. I mean, he. He understands it more than anybody that it's not just, you know, the the, the opponents every night that he's going up against. I mean, there, there, there's a lot more yeah, the, people after him. The deck is stacked against yeah, him. Yeah, and fortunate for us, like for, for him, is the SEC is so strong in basketball. Like it used to be like you win the SEC or you come out second in the SEC and like, oh, you're okay, you're good, but like you're not top lot, top-notch top SEC. But the basketball, like now, the SEC is like a big basketball. Not, now I'm is. not saying basketball league, but now like – Rep, I mean, the, 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 the reputation teams, of the yeah. SEC is growing. Absolutely, yeah, sure. no, I agree with all of that. But I'm saying it didn't. It it was a big, it was a good lead last year, and that didn't seem to make a difference with. Yeah, but I think that was Will Wade, like, and it just seems like they're yeah. always going to drop him down a peg or two just because always. they can. Yeah, well, always. I mean, they're just, no, for sure, for they're sure. going to mess with him when they can. Yeah, right. And you this what is mean? what they have total autonomy over. Right. Uh, all right. Enjoy your day if you're going to make it out to the Maribyrd Center tonight. Enjoy the game. That game tips off at seven o'clock this afternoon. Seven, Mikey. Um, we will have a present. Seven, there. Allie. Mm-hmm. Seven. We'll be in the game tonight. Oh, yeah. Game tonight. Yep. We'll have. Hey, uh, we'll have our crew. Our there. guy, Jordan, is he gets angles that nobody's gonna Bro, get. The, uh, the he pictures. is committed to that, and that's the best <laughs> thing ever. He's a voyeur. The pictures. I love it. Are, the picture are, are, are incredible. And we got to start watermarking those things. We're gonna look up. They're gonna be on si.com. They totally um, are. Yep. I'm telling you. Um, right. And he's like, yeah, they should be. Yeah, Thank you. Right. <laughs> um, they'll find you. I mean, yeah, they they know, they know where the talent is. You, you gotta know, come through me. Come, you know what I mean? Um, all right, hey, look, like, share, comment. We appreciate you being there. Thank you to uh, Josh Pate and thank you to Nick Underhill for stopping by today. For the carpool queen, for Mikey, for Lizzie, for Jordan. I'm Jordy Collada signing off. Oh. We'll be back with. Oh, oh you know yeah. what? Thursday night pick. No, oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no. We're gonna be back here at 10:30. Staged out. <laughs> Bruce Feldman <laughs> is gonna stop by and we're gonna talk to Feldman. Oh, we'll have a uh, we'll have an interview with Feldman and get an update on. Uh, 
on who'll be like, yeah, who's the bet? This, the Atlanta Falcons going to have a stinky line. That's a That's stinky, what I'm stinky. Wait, what's the line? Wait, 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 in Atlanta. Yep. And who is Shout it? It's, it's, say it again. Say it again. New England at Atlanta. New England at Atlanta. Uh, Cordell, Cordell Patterson does not. They do not know if he's going to play. I would say it's a uh, eight and a half. Patriots. Six, six and a half. Mm. Ooh. They're begging. Mm. They're begging for you to get that touchdown. Mm. That, and that's where I would lean if you have to. You're looking hey, at New England and, at a touchdown. If Patterson you get that may, six and a half and, number. But if Patterson plays. I hate being the guy that bets against Belichick. Me too, especially mm-hmm. the way they're playing right now. And the, yeah, what you they're think doing they're down, now, you think they're, they're kind of rolling. Like, they're rolling. They're kind of rolling. Yeah, I mean, they they kind of feel like they're heading. So down is, that, the is that your move? I'm trying. Or are you going to go I'm for a weekend? I'm trying to be. What's the, to go, bet? What's the bet? What's the bet? I'm trying to be the guy that doesn't fall for these traps. But New England at well, six and a half. What's the over under? That's a good question. Forty-seven. I'm not a big over under. I'm think, not a big totals yeah. guy. I, I don't like the over under there, actually. Especially I on the, Thursday I like the under on that. And if I stuff. ever bet Thursday night totals, I under. always take the under. Under. I think it's. I think that'd be an under. They never had their legs. If Patterson doesn't play. I think that's under. Six and a half. Forty-seven. Forty-seven. I think the play is the under. Under play. The under. If Patterson the doesn't under? play. If Patterson's full go, I think that. See, I does Patterson that, make that much of a difference? He does. I know he did against the Saints. For Atlanta, yeah. that's what I mean, though. Like he's like. I mean, they got no Calvin Ridley. Both. You need both teams to score. To get to, uh, All right, to get I'm never. I'm, I'm, I'm changing my pick. Changing the pick. Official oh, pick. Gross. Patriots. Oh, Patriots. There we go. Stick Patriots. with it. Patriots money line. Atlanta Patriots and the under sounds like the lock. Yeah. Oh, no, come I'm on. Joking, you get. You got you, a little Patriots bit of a short schedule. A Bill Belichick, six and a half. Rookie quarterback. Patriots Rookie. six and a half. Matt Ryan. He can't figure out old Bill. Final. 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 Got bad juju final in that game. Uh, yeah, it does. It's over. It's <laughs> over. New England six and a half. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll be back with you in an hour. With Bruce. Bruce. Ready, Kate? Yeah.